The NRG Astrodome, also known as the Houston Astrodome or simply the Astrodome, was the world's first multi-purpose dome sports stadium, located in Houston, Texas. It was financed and assisted in development by Roy Hoff Hines, mayor of Houston and known for pioneering modern stadiums. Construction on the stadium began in 1962, and it officially opened in 1965. It served as home to the Houston Astros of Major League Baseball from its opening until 1999, and the home to the Houston Oilers of the National Football League from 1968 until 1996, and also the part-time home of the Houston Rockets of the National Basketball Association from 1971 until 1975. Additionally, the Astrodome was the primary venue of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo from 1966 until 2002. When opened, it was named the Harris County Dome Stadium and was nicknamed the Eighth Wonder of the World. After the original natural grass playing surface died, the Astrodome became the first major sports venue to install artificial turf, which became known as AstroTurf. In another technological first, the Astrodome featured the Astrolite, which was the first animated scoreboard. The Astrodome was renovated in 1988, expanding seating and altering many original features. By the 1990s, the Astrodome was becoming obsolete. Unable to secure a new stadium, Oilers owner Bud Adams moved the team to Tennessee after the 1996 season, where they eventually became the Tennessee Titans. The Astros played at the Dome through the 1999 season, before relocating to Enron Field later changed to Minute Maid Park in the year 2000 while the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo continued to be held at the Astrodome until the opening of the adjacent NRG Stadium in 2002 which coincided with the debut of the Houston Texans, the team that replaced the Oilers. Although it no longer had any primary tenants, the venue regularly hosted events during the early 2000s, and in 2005, it was used as a shelter for residents of New Orleans affected by Hurricane Katrina. The Astrodome was declared non-compliant with fire code by the Houston Fire Department in 2008 and parts of it were demolished in 2013 after several years of disuse. In 2014 it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. We've had a change in the starting lineup from what we originally received, but uh, here's the starting lineup now for the New York Yankees. Leading off and playing left field is Mickey Mantle. Mantle in left field. Bobby Richardson at second base. Richardson at second. Roger Maris in right field. Maris in right. Joe Pepitone at first base. Pepitone at first. Tony Kubek will be at shortstop. Kubek at short. Tom Tresh. In center field, Fresh in center. Pete Foyer at third base. Foyer at third. John Blanchard will do the catching. Blanchard the catcher. And Mel Stottlemyre will be on the mound. Stottlemyre will do the pitching. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup here for Houston. Joe Morgan at second base. Morgan at second. Al Spangler, left field, Spangler in left. Rusty Staub in right field, Staub in right. Walt Bond, first base, Bond at first. Bob Astromani will be at third base, Astromani at third. Jim Wynn in center field, Wynn in center. Bob Lillis at shortstop, Lillis at short. Ron Brand, the catcher, Brand catching. And Turk Farrell, the right-hander, will be on the mound. Farrell, a right-hander. So the Yankee lineup again, Mantle in left, Richardson at second base, Maris in right. Pepitone on first, Kubek at short, Fresh in center field, Boyer at third, Blanchard catching, and Stottlemyre the pitcher. And for Houston Morgan at second, Spangler left, Shaw at right field, Bond first base, Astromani third, Wynn center field, Lillis at short, Brand the catcher, and Farrell the pitcher. Governor John Conley of Texas now is all set to fire off the first baseball on the first base side. And he throws it to catcher Ron Brand. And Ron now is bringing it back up to the box seat and handling it to the governor. And uh, Warren Giles of the National League is also down there. So John Conley has thrown out the first ball here. Uh, governor Conley now has uh, given the ball to uh, Warren Giles and he evidently uh, asked him to autograph it and said, Warren, my name's already on there. So we're just about all set to play ball now. Astros are taking their warm-up throws down the right side. And the two managers 
are getting together in home plate. You know, Lowell, this is a homecoming for number 21 down there, Johnny Keene. And uh, he is going over the ground rules now with uh, skipper of the Houston Astros, Lumen Harris. The evening's broadcast is authorized by the Houston Astros Baseball Club to be used only for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any other use of the descriptions and accounts of this play-by-play broadcast without written permission of the Houston National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And there go the Astros out on the field. Wynn to center, Staub to right. Aspromonte to third, Lillis to short, Morgan to second base, Bond to first, and Brand the catcher. Stogger's getting a few shots of the umpires and the managers down at home plate. Mel Steiner of the National League will be umpiring at the plate. Larry Knapp of the American League at first. Dan Landis of the National League at second. And Al Salerno of the American League will be at third. Temperature 72 degrees. Wind is calm. Sky is clear. As Turk Farrell takes his warm-up throws with catcher Ron Brand. We uh, were a little bit early getting on tonight to cover the pregame ceremonies here. And uh, I neglected to mention it, but we do have our usual crew here tonight. Uh, Lowell Pass, Harry Callis, our producer Bob Boyne, and engineer Bob Green. Want to send out a few extra thanks to Mr. Bob Green, who has been practically living here for the past two days after we got back into Florida to get our setup all ready to go for the 1965 season. And uh, I know that you can tell already that he has done his usual magnificent job. The lead batter for the New York Yankees is going to be Mickey Mantle. Now, I might say that Mantle is being bothered by that hamstring muscle in his right leg again. And I don't think that we'll see too much of Mickey tonight. But he will make what I believe will be a token appearance, and I assume that's the reason that Johnny Keene has moved into the leadoff spot so that he can get a bat in the first inning. I'm just strictly speculating now. But I doubt that Mantle will play too much tonight. He was origin- was not originally in the lineup, but uh, Johnny Keene shifted his lineup around and has moved Mantle to the leadoff spot, a spot, of course, that he normally will not occupy during the season. But uh, Mickey will get his swings here to get the ball game underway at least, and then... Uh, he has been bothered by that bad leg, and I assume will be taken out. Uh, Elston Howard uh, will also uh, miss tonight's uh, game. As I mentioned, uh, Mantle has the hamstring muscle pull, and uh, Howard has injured his arm uh, during an exhibition game in Puerto Rico a few days ago. So the catching duties tonight for the Yankees will be handled by uh, John Blanchard. The Astros will come in tonight with a spring exhibition record of 12 wins and 8 defeats, and five more games remain on the schedule. We will uh, give you the play-by-play story of all five, of course, with two tomorrow, the Orioles tomorrow afternoon, <laughs> and the Yankees tomorrow night. <laughs> the third thing <laughs> Al Salerno, as they broke up the conference of the plate, started to cut in front of Farrell's fastball, and he quickly stopped. Uh, no damage done. Well, we're all set to play ball, and here's Mickey Mantle. Mantle, a switch hitter, batting left-handed against Kirk Farrell. Mantle is hitting 324 this spring with two homers and four runs batted in. He has one double. Mel Steiner working the flight. Farrell all set to throw the first pitch. And here's the windup in the first pitch of the ball game, and it's a ball lowered outside. And the first ball is being taken to Warren Giles, president of the National League. Steiner call time. Ron Brand trotted over to the box seats on the right side to present the National League correctly the ball. So the first one thrown here, in actual competition, although an exhibition game, has been given to Warren Giles. One ball and no strikes on Mickey Mantle, and here's the pitch now by Farrell. Ground ball, base hit up the middle. Jimmy Wynn comes in to make the pickup, and Mantle just does get down to first base. You can see that he has an ailing leg. He trotted down, and there's the first hit of the ball game on the second pitch. So Mantle has singled, and that will bring up the second baseman for New York, Bobby Richardson. Richardson, the right-handed batter, hitting 229. He has five runs batted in and four doubles. Al Spangler in left. Jim Wynn in center. Rusty Staub in right. Bob Aspermonte at third. Bob Lillis at short. Joe Morgan second base. Walt Bond at first. Ron Brand the catcher. Farrell ready now. Watch his mantle on first base. Here's the pitch on the way and a slow ball. One ball and no strike. Mantle on with the base hit. Frankie Crosetti coaching down on third for the Bombers. Vern Benson coaching over on first for New York. 
No score. We've just started. Man along with a base hit. One ball, no strikes. The start of a goal by Richardson. Held and it's in there for a strike. And it's one ball and one strike. Roger Maris has moved to the on-deck circle off the left side. The Yankees occupying the third base dugout here at the Astrodome. Kirk ready again now. Not too big a lead by Mantle on first base. The pitch to Richardson. Ground ball to the shortstop. Lillis goes to second. Out there. Throw to first. No double play. Ball was just not hit hard enough for the double play. Lillis fielded it just off the infield grass. Went to Joe Morgan for the force on Mantle. And the relay to first base to Walt Bond was not in time. And Richardson safe over there. Here now is Roger Maris, the New York right fielder. Down the foul lines here at the Astrodome, it's 340 feet. 340 to right, 340 to left, 406 feet to center field, and 390 to right center and left center field. Richardson takes his lead, and Maris takes a high outside fastball, and it's ball one. Kirk has not had a good spring. He worked 13 innings up to this point and has allowed 19 hits. And his earned run average is 5.54. Kirk has struck out only one batter this spring and has given up two bases on ball. Pitch on the way to Maris. Big swing and a miss. And it's one ball, one strike. Just a magnificent sight here tonight. We may have close to 50,000 people here tonight. I see an awfully lot of standing room occupied in center field. Stretch again by Farrell now. Richardson takes the big lead, and Maris checks the swing just in time. A high inside fastball. He started to go, but held up on it. And it's two balls and one strike. Two one count. Maris is hitting uh, 243 this spring. He has hit two homers and driven in eight runs. He has come up with three doubles. Richardson edges away from Wall Bond. Here's the pitch into Maris, and it's a little bit low and outside. So the count goes to three balls and one strike. A lead single by Mickey Mantle. And Mantle was erased on a ground ball to short to Lillis as Richardson hit him the force play at second base. One out. And Joe Pepitone will be up next. Top half of the first inning. Here's a three and one pitch to Maris. He walked him outside ball four. So the Yankees have put two on. Richardson moves up to second. Roger Maris takes over first. And now the colorful first baseman for the Yankees, Joe Pepitone, steps in. Pepitone is hitting 209. Two homers and 13 runs batted in. Take of compassion, the first baseman you talked about, Stewart, with no shrinking violent. Uh, this fellow, very similar, Gene. Very similar, Lowell. He plays a better first base, though. Oh! Pepitone, a real good ball player, and will be for some time to come for the Yankees. Runners on first and second base. Richardson on second, Maris on first. Outfield is uh, playing Pepitone pretty well straight away. Arms down by Farrell now. Here's the pitch on the way. And a fly ball left field. Al Spangler coming on for this one now. He's there, and he has got it. And there are two guys. So Pepitone on the first pitch. Looks a uh, high fly to not too deep left field to Spangler. As Richardson moves back to second. Maris back to first. And that will bring up Tony Kubek. Kubek is hitting 283. Standard batter. Two on, two out. Top of the first inning. Farrell against Mel Stottlemyer. We'll be working for the New York Yankees tonight. Kirk takes his time now up on the rubber. Tex Richardson on second base. And the first pitch in is a strike up around the letter. Strike one. You know, I think, uh, well, one of the interesting... Look at the, all the players down in the dugout up on the rim taking this... Uh, Side in here tonight. They're not even back in the dugout bench. They want to get as close as possible. Here's the pitch on the way now. Fly ball at center field. Jimmy Wynn and Spangler there. Uh, Wynn makes the call. Got it. He's out of the two men fly to left center field to Jimmy Wynn. Top of the first inning. No runs, one hit. No errors. Two men left on base. Top of the first, the Yankees nothing. And the Houston Astros are coming to bat. Right-hander Mel Stottlemyre taking his loosening up throws out of the mound as we swing into the bottom half of the first inning, no score. Johnny Blanchard shoots it down to the second baseman, Bobby Richardson. And the lead batter for the Astros is second baseman, Joe Morgan. He'll be followed by Al Spangler and Rusty Staub. Here's little Joe. He's batting 163 this spring. One run batted in one double. Joe has played a tremendous defensive second base and... Uh, 
has not been hitting the ball as badly as his average indicates. Saddlemeyer takes his time now and checks his defense. Third baseman, Cleet Boyer, in on the grass. And here's the windup in the first pitch by Saddlemeyer. Ground ball right side. Bobby Richardson there for it. On over to Pepitone, one down. So Morgan hits the first ball pitch and bounces out second to first. That'll bring up Al Spangler. Saddlemeyer has pitched 32 innings for the Yankees this spring and has given up 29 hits. And uh, he evidently is picking up here uh, this spring where he left off last year at the World Series. His ERA, 1.97. Saddlemeyer. Here's Al. He's hitting 304. Spangler, left-handed batter. One run batted in the spring. Four doubles. Al has had a real good spring. Saddlemeyer's first pitch, low outside, gets away from Blanchard. Ball one. Jimmy Adair, coaching at first. Those of you fans who will be uh, watching our ball club in action in person this year, uh, Jimmy Adair uh, is wearing number three this year. Jimmy changes his number every season. And Jim Busby on third. Ball is low. Ball two, no strikes on Spangler. One out, nobody on base. Bottom of the first. Saddlemeyer in 32 innings this spring has struck out 21. So he has that pitch going for him. He's given up only six bases on ball. Now base hit, I believe. No, no, no. Tom Trace is back. He got it. Down it good. But carried right into Trace's hands in left center field. Two out now. That'll bring up Rusty Staub. Rusty is uh, after a very bad start this spring. The last couple of weeks has been looking real fine. Rusty's got this timing back. And just about everything he's been hitting the past couple of weeks has been on the line. 280 batting average. First pitch, low ball one. Rusty has hit two homers, eight RBIs, and has two doubles. Two out, nobody on base. Bottom of the first, no score. Morgan has bounced out. Spangler's lined to Trash in center field. Ball a little bit outside of the knees. Ball two, no strike. Nicky Mantle left field. Tom Trash centers. Roger Maris at right field. Lee Boyer on third. Tony Kubek at short. Bobby Richardson second base. Joe Pepitone on first. Saddlemeyer rocks back now. Here's the pitch on the way to Rusty. Swing and a miss. He took a dandy cut on that one. Two balls, one strike. President Johnson has just arrived in uh, President Judge Hoffine's spot. High over the stands in right center field. President Johnson has just arrived, and he is in the box up there now. Two outs, nobody on. Here's the windup in the pitch to stop. Rusty hits one high. He's in the right center field. It'll be caught. Tracy's over. And the right fielder, Roger Merritt, steps in front of him to make the catch on the edge of the warning track to retire the side. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits. No errors, and nobody left on base. And at the end of the first inning of play, New York up to the announcing on the PA that the president has arrived here at the stadium tonight. Center fielder Tom Fresh will lead off for New York now as we move into the top half of the second inning. And they have just uh, flashed a picture of the president on the screen in center field and up on the message board now. Welcome, Mr. President. will be followed by Boyer and Blanchard. The ball game has uh, been held up now, and uh, almost all the fans here, I would say all of them looking in the direction of the president, uh, in the box, high over the right center field stand, and giving him an ovation. Most of the fans here uh, giving him a standing ovation. Here's Tom Trice now, center fielder, left-handed batter for New York. I feel pretty well straight away. Here's the windup by Farrell and the pitch. Trace was going to bunt that ball, and he took it low and outside ball one, one and nothing. Kirk, 30-year-old right-hander, stands 6'4", weighs 220 pounds. Kirk trying to get back in the groove after a rough spring. And all set again now. Here's the pitch on the way to Trace. Swing and a fastball up around the letters, and he misses. And it's one ball, one strike. We'll have some scores for a little bit later on. There's a night game going on tonight, exhibition game, and there are some afternoon finals, which we'll report to you. There's a change of the slip pitch. Uh, the Farrell gave in too high to Fresh. And the count moves out to two balls, one strike. First of the second inning, no score. Yankees and the Astros, Farrell against Stottlemyre. Cleet Boyer in the on-deck circle off the left side. The pitch to Fresh, line drive left field. Spangler over for this one now. Al on the run, he's got it, and he's one down. Fresh is lined to left field. That'll bring up Cleet Boyer. 
All of us here in the broadcasting booth tonight would like to send out a special hello to uh, King Cole, who was a uncle of Betty Robinson, who is the wife of Betty Robinson, our farm director with the Astros. Uh, King is in Herman Hospital now. He's a real good Astros baseball fan, and they're making plans to get out to see the opener, but uh, couldn't make it tonight and is looking forward to getting out real soon. So a special hello to King Cole from all of us here in our broadcast booth tonight. Ball, it's low. Boyer, the batter, one out, and John Blanchard, the catcher, will be up next. Ground ball right by Farrell, and in the center field for a base hit. Little over, couldn't get it. And the big turn on first by Boyer, and Winstrow goes back into little Joe Morgan out by second base. So Boyer has bounced the second hit of the ball game, a hopper through the box. It bounced right by Farrell's pitching hand in the center field. Matt will open the ball game with a base hit, and now Boyer single. One out, Boyer on first. Here's the catcher, John Blanchard. Hitting 189. One homer and four RBIs. He has one double. John Blanchard, utility man deluxe for the Yankees, is working the plate tonight. Boyer takes a very short lead off first base. Farrell pitch, fly ball, center field. Jimmy Wynn coming on fast for this one now. Slows up and makes the play on that one, and they're two down. Blanchard lost a lazy fly ball to center field to Jimmy Wynn, and that will bring up the pitcher, Mel Stottlemyer. No score, top of the second. Two out now with Boyer on first base. For those of you who uh, are not too familiar with the Dome Stadium here, it's 208 feet from second base to the top of the Dome. 208 feet there. Here's the stretch now and the pitch on the way. Foul, that's up in the seat. There's the first souvenir for somebody. The first souvenir that has been hit into the stands. And it's one strike on Sondelmeyer. Boyer hanging close to Bond on first base, waiting for Farrell to get set. Arms down again by Turk. Here's the pitch now. There's a fly ball. Shallow center field. Lillis going out. Morgan going out. Wynn makes the call. Jim's there. Jim's got it to retire the side. No runs and one hit. No errors. And one man left on base. We go to the bottom half of the second inning here at the Astrodome. There's no score. New York nothing and Houston nothing. Bottom half of the second inning, and Walt Bond will lead off. He'll be followed by Bob Astromati and Jim Wynn. Well, the Astrodome has quite a few distinctive features, of course. One of them is the pretty close to the tallest foul poles in the business, anyway. As they go way up in the air above the ninth level. KRLD, AM and FM, Dallas. Guys in one double. Walled off to a slow start to spring. Sottlemyer's pitch. There's a tap off the right side. Pepitone feels and uh, touches the bag just in front of Bond. Sottlemyer was over to cover, but Pepitone, seeing that he had no chance to hand the ball to Sottlemyer, made the play himself. Bond topped that ball, a roller toward first base, and is out unassisted by the first baseman, Joe Pepitone. Here's Astro. Astro Monty hitting 277. Two homers and 13 runs batted in. Astro has hit four doubles. No score. Bottom of inning number two. Outfield defense up and swings around the left side. I know all the fans are anxious to see someone hit a home run here tonight so they can see that scoreboard go off. There's the ball low and outside. Ball one. One out. Bond has rolled the first. Sotomayor is still a youngster. He's only 23 years old. And as most of you fans know... Was a great aid to the Yankees. The tail end of last year. Very high fly ball. That's way up in the air. Left center field. Tom Trish making the call on it. Coming in from center field. Astromani has been retired. Two down. Here's Jimmy Wynn. Well, Wynn has had an exciting spring. Has done a tremendous job defensively for Houston. And uh, on the batting side, comes in here tonight with a 250 average. Jim has hit two homers. He has four runs batted in, four doubles and two triples. And Sottlemyer's first pitch. Strike. He stuck that bat up, pulled it back, but evidently Mel Steiner, the plate umpire, said it was in there anyway. Strike one. Sottlemyer stands 6'2 and weighs 175 pounds. He's a native of Hazelden, Missouri, but he makes his home now in Madison, Washington. He has pitched in the major leagues less than a year. Jim fouls one. That is headed uh, just under the press level or the second seating level of the mezzanine seat. And another souvenir here at the Astrodome tonight. Two strikes on Jimmy Wynn. Two outs, nobody on base. Sottlemyer started the season with Richmond of the International League last year where he won 13 games and lost three and after being called up by New York. 
helped them to win the American League Senate by winning nine games while losing only three. The pitch to win. Fastball. It's a little bit low outside. And it's one ball, two strikes. Two outs. Bond is rolled out, and Astromati is fly to center. No score. Yankees nothing, Astros nothing. Bottom half of the second inning. Wynn swings, and he misses, and he struck him out. So the first strikeout. Wynn goes down swinging. Myers retired the first six men to face him tonight. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. The end of two innings of play. Yankees nothing, Astros nothing. Now we're moving on to the first half of the third inning. Here's the Astrodome now. Yankees nothing, Astros nothing. And now let's hear from Harry Kelly. Thank you, Gene. Mickey Mantle, the leadoff for the New York Yankees. He'll be followed by Bobby Richardson and Roger Maris. Mantle has one of the two hits off Kurt Sell. He singled the leadoff of the ball game. And the first hit in, a, in an official game here at the Astrodome. Farrell winds the pitch to Mantle as high and inside ball one. One ball and no strikes to Mickey Mantle, who has had 454 career home runs, more than any other active player. Willie Mays is only one behind him. Mays is at 453. Third barrel looks in at Ron Brand. Here's the 1 0 pitch, and that's high with a fastball. Ball two. 2 and 0 to Mantle. Mantle's a switch hitter, batting left against the right hander, Farrell. Mickey's batting average is higher right handed, but his home run frequency is higher left handed. Mantle also leads all active players in career runs batted in. A high foul off on the left-hand side. That ball is out of play and a souvenir for the fans. Great grab up above us, apparently, as the fans down below look up and send out a round of applause for some fan who apparently made a nice play of the ball. Two balls and one strike to Mickey Mantle. Bobby Richardson on that. No score. We're in the top of the third. Now in that pitch, playing a bounding ball to second base. Joe Morgan scoops, bobbles, recovers, throws the first. It's in time by a half a step. Mantle is out by a half a step. As Dean mentioned earlier, Mantle is still bothered by a pulled hamstring. Well, the one, of course, that he had been affected by that. He would have beat it up. But Joe Morgan recovered in town. Missed him, so I'm Mickey is out of there. That'll bring up Bobby. Bobby grounded into a fielder's choice his last time up. Hitting 229 this spring, the right hand batter. Here's the pitch to him. He takes the fastball inside. He has to back away. Ball one. One ball and no strikes to Bobby Richardson. Richardson last year for the Yankees at 267. He's got a World Series record for most hits the last year with 13. He grounds one to second. Morgan scoops it cleanly. Throws the first. And Richardson is out for out number two. So there are two down on the top of the third, and that'll bring up Roger Maris, the right fielder. Maris walked his last time up. Here's Maris, who of course did 61 home runs in 1961. He came to the Yankees from Kansas City in December of 59, and a trade in which the Yankees also obtained Kent Hadley and Joe DeMaitre. The Yankees gave Kansas City Don Larson. Here's a pitch, and Mighty swinging him as strike one on the pass. Kansas City in that trade. Got John Larson, who, of course, is now a member of the Astros, along with Marv Thronberry, Hank Bauer, and Norm Seaver. Here's the next pitch. A slip pitch is low for a ball, and it's even at one and one. Two out and nobody out. Top half of the third, and there's no score. A back house at the beautiful all-new Astrodome. Now Farrell's 1-1 pitch, a high fly ball into center field, fairly deep, but Jim Wynn is back, pounds the glove, comes in a couple of steps and makes the catch to retire the side. So the Yanks are down in order in the third. No runs, no hits, there were no astro errors, and none left on. And after two and a half innings of play, it remains a scoreless time. Moving into the bottom half of the third inning, Bob Lillis leads off for the Astros. He'll be followed by Ron Bram, and then the pitcher, Kurt Farrell, to face Mel Saddlemeyer. Saddlemeyer, 23-year-old right-hander, who was the International League Player of the Year last year. Joined the Yankees in August and won nine games for the Yanks. The pitch to Lillis is in there with a fastball called strike one. 0-1 to Bob Lillis. No score in the bottom of the third. Al Saddlemeyer looks in to capture John Blanton. That pitch is grounded foul down the first base side, off the screen in front of the Astro dugout, and bounds into right field, was chased down by the bat boy, and the count 
is 0-2. Saddlemeyer ahead of the hitter, Bob Lillard. Saddlemeyer last year hurled a 7 to nothing two-hit shutout at Washington on September 26th, and he'll long remember that game because he went 5-for-5 five five at the plate. There's a high ground ball to third. Clay Boyer has it behind third. Throws across the diamond, and Lillard is out of there for round number one. That'll bring up Ron Brand, Astro catcher. Brand's a spring, hitting 250 in exhibition games with three home runs. With one home run, rather. Three doubles and one triple. Ron, a right-hand batter with one out and nobody on. Salmire winds a pitch to him. There's a little bit low with a slider. Ball one. One ball and no strike to Ron Brand. No score in the bottom of third. The first official game to be played here at the Astrodome. An afternoon game tomorrow against the Baltimore Orioles. The Yankees again tomorrow night. Sunday afternoon against the Yankees. Sunday night against Baltimore. Line drive in the right center field. Far back goes Roger Maris. He's down to the score all the way to the fence. Grand round in second. He's going to drive to third. The goal comes in. Grand is going to round third. And now holds up the third with his hand up. Of that crowd as Ron Brand triples the right center field. Called it went past Merrick, rounded off the fence at about the 400 foot mark, and Brand is out of third base with the first pass throw hit in the Astrodome. That brings up Kurt Farrell, the pitcher with a chance to lay his cards. Ron Brand at third base and one man down. Brand took a sweeping turn at third base when Maris missed the cutoff man, second base from Bobby Richardson. The Tony Spubach was there behind Richardson to take the relay throw, and Brand immediately hustled back to third. He's on a third base with a stand-up triple. No score in the bottom of the third. The Astros with a runner at third and one out. Here's a pitch to Farrell. A ground ball to second base. Richardson holds the runner at third, throws the first, and Farrell is out of there for out number two. Carl will take a base hit now to brings up Joe Morgan, the leadoff man, who's rounded out second to first his last time up. Little Joe has hit 163 in spring training games, but that is not indicative of the way he has hit the ball. He's hit the ball very, very well. Joe Morgan, the left-hand batter, Ron Brand at third base, two men out in the bottom of the third. Al Saddlemeyer, the right-hander, looks in at John Blanchard for the time. And the pitch to Morgan is a swing and a miss, strike one on a fastball. 0-1 to Joe Morgan. Morgan, a fast man, was the most valuable player in the Texas League last year. He had 323 for San Antonio. Here's the next pitch to him. It's inside low. Nearly got away from captured John Blanchard. The count is even at one and one. Ron Brand at third base with a triple. That's his second triple this spring. Two men down in the bottom of the third. And there's no score. The Astros with one hit and the Yankees with two. Now a 1-1 offering, swinging a ground ball to first base. Pepitone has it, waves off Saddlemeyer, makes the unassisted foot out, and that retires the side. Before the Astros, no runs on one hit. There were no Yankee errors, one runner left on. Out of the end of three full innings of play, it's the Astros nothing and the Yankees nothing. Well, I don't own all the coffee in the world, but I'm certainly going to enjoy a cup of Maryland Club right now, and that's my cue to turn the microphone over to Lowell Pass. Lowell? All right, thank you, Harry, and hello, everybody. What a thrill it is. And the pitch goes down to second. Joe Pepitone, the leadoff batter for the Yankees. Then Tony Kubek follows the contract. There's no score in this ball game. Two hits for the Yankees, one hit for the Astros. This is the top half of the fourth inning. Left hand hitter, Joe Pepitone. Up there, he flies to left field. It's finally his first time. He calls time and wants the rosin. And now defines our top. Yep, those Yankees used the rosin bag and the pine tar cloth also there. Dean, did you know that? No score in the ball game. And certainly so delighted to be numbered among those here on broadcasting baseball from the fabulous Astrodome. A strike call as Phil brings on the first pitch. That looked like just medium speed stuff. And Pepitone taking all the way through. 
Joe batting at 207. Here's a bit. Swung on in a high pop foul. It'll be out of play. Souvenir. To the lucky fans here in Houston's fabulous Astrodome. That makes, let's say, three of them, doesn't it? Well, that's quite a treasure. That's a trophy. Take home a baseball from here. And that goes for not only tonight, but for any game that any of you uh, attend. So, end of the wind up, the rock back to pitch. Swung on, hit into right center field. Deep. And it's not too deep, so back near the very edge of the warning back. Jimmy Wynn is back there, and he gloved it. It's one away. Well, as we have said all spring and uh, progressing right along, Jimmy Wynn has shown us some of the best improvement of not only players listed on our roster, but any major league roster. Jimmy Wynn in center field. And all the fans who are here tonight, just ask them about it. If happens to be a next-door neighbor of yours, a relative, a member of the family, just say, how does Jimmy Wynn look in center field? Tony Kubek's about it. Strike tall of beauty right down the middle. Kubek slides to center field his first time, hitting at 279 this trip around. He was 283 at the start of the ball game. Pitch is just a shade off the mark. A little bit hard side. And the count is one ball and one strike. The one out, no base runners. New York Yankees at bat here. Top of the fourth inning. Scoreless ball game. Tom Tress waiting to come up next. Farrell pitch. Swung on. Hit out into left field. High down near the line. Spangler coming over fast. Can he get it? He's there. He's got it. Within about a couple of yards of the left field line, Spangler didn't have too much trouble. It was a long run, but plenty of heights on that top. Oh, boy. Fellas, you've heard this on television. But this is the first time you've ever heard it on radio. This game is coming to you in living color. And you just have to be here to see it and believe it. What a beautiful and giant scoreboard up there. I wonder who's going to activate that spectacular. Here's a high pop by Flash off to the left side to short. Here's the play. Lillard's out there waiting. On that green carpet, he's got it. And it retires the Yankees in order. No runs, no hits, no one left. And there were no errors. Those of you who happen to be tuned in with those... Transistor radios down there. Just stand around here and oh, 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 sort of salute you there with a Maryland club. Now Spangler leads off, followed by Rusty Staub and then Walter Bond. No score. Let's see if we can get something going. What do you say? Well, we're up against the defending champs of the American League, this annual uh, champs almost, you can say. Spangler sitting at 298 over the course of the exhibition season. But we've got five more games to go for the regular season start. Spangler hit one to the right side. Two there. Base hit. So the German ball player drives one through the hole between second baseman Richardson and first baseman Pepitone. Base hit to the right side. And that amounts to the second hit that we have picked up off Mel Stoudemire. And a nice hand as Rusty Staub is announced. Rusty slide out to right field is first trip. Well, of course, double play uh, depth infield. Shaded off to the right side of there. And Stoudemire pitches down Rusty Swing, drives down to the second baseman. And Richardson goes down to short, back to first, and it's a double play. Just stop two back covering, and on the throw back to first, and plenty of time for the double play. Richardson, two back to Pepitone, 4-6-3, of course. And with two down in a hurry, that brings on Walter Bond. No score in the ball game, and it's moving rapidly along. Well, a lot of people have asked the question, what sort of a baseball game can you expect to see here? High-scoring game? Low-scoring game? A no-scoring game. There's a drive out to the left center field. It's in there for a base hit. Might go for two, could go for three. The big bomber is digging to seven, and he will be content with a double. Wait a minute, he breaks out the ball, gets back to the A, man. Goes on to third. So Walter Bond, who pulled up to stop just as he rounded second, then accelerated and spread it on to third as the ball went past the cutoff man. A double and an error. Error, Kubek. So E6 if you score with it. And there is the first error of the ball game. No score. And with two down, Bob Astromani is the batter. Our third baseman has tried to center field and he's on the third. And Jim Busby coaches up that third. Uh, having uh, Bond fail off. A couple of big strides and a half or so. And he widens it as the stretch is made in the pitch, low and away. Dug out by Blanchard off of the right two top almost. Jimmy Wynn standing by at the on deck circle, which is an emblem of uh, our Astrodome. And the baseball's that circle, of course. 
orbiting. Ready, sunrise pitch. Swung on and missed. And there was Vic sweeping stuff. Duke Carmel, an outfielder, and Bob Smith, one of the catchers, doing a little uh, loosening up down along the left line. Duke Carmel and Bob Smith for the Yankees. All right, no score. Ask somebody waiting to pitch. Swung on. There's a sophomore hit down the left side. He's good shot. He's back up with it. Over the first in time. And that retires the side. Well, almost, but not quite. And for the Astros, no runs with one hit. One left. There was one error. And so at the end of four innings to play, the Astros nothing and the Yankees nothing. Well, here again at the Astrodome, it's time to batter up. And the leadoff man will be Clayt Boyer for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Johnny Blanchard. And then we'll see, as there is no warm-up activity on the sidelines, Mel Stoudemire, perhaps. We'll have a chance for our station identification coming up after this batter. All right, here's the pitch now to Boyer. Takes it way up high, ball one. Cleet came through with a base hit single in the second inning. Boyer batting 286 to start the game, and that roll is uh, the average up to 295. The pitch, low and inside, a ball. The big right-hander, Farrell, so rocked back, two swung on, hit down past uh, third base foul, just out of a couple of three feet or so. And third base jumper Al Salermo putting on a little spectacular, letting everybody know that was foul. And I guess the players appreciate that sort of thing. It saves uh, a couple of three or four running steps down the line. And all the way around. No score in the ball game here at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. And I know that many of you who did not get to make it out here tonight will be here tomorrow or sometime during the season. Foul up and back. That'll go into the crowd. Well, let's see what color that went into there, boys. That's the coral red, isn't it? Right. That is in the mezzanine. We are on the club level. This is the uh, third seating level. One, two, three. Let me count them. We've got six seating levels. Nine years a level. Here's a pitch in there for a strike and got him. So strike three to retire played off by the boy and while we wait now for Blanchard, let's call for station identification. This is the Astros Baseball Network. You're where the action is on KRLD AM and FM Dallas. The time is 8.31. And our first pitch to Blanchard is popped up back of the plate off of the mask. Fran trailing out under it and Little Ron takes it off to the right of the plate. In there, let's get an estimate on the distance from the plate back to the screen, the backstop. Let's see, I'll count it. 10, 20, 30, about 35 feet or so, I would say. And likewise, off to the right side, uh, a little more than that to the very leading edge of our dugout. Houston occupies the first base dugout. A lot of people like to be behind the dugout. Well, okay, they are down there. The longest dugout in all the world. Two down, and here's Stottlemyre taking the first pitch for the ball, a little high and away. Nothing and nothing on the scoreboard. Stottlemyre has been up now the second trip to the plate and fly to center the first time. Swings and hits one down the right field line. Rusty stops coming, and it goes over just in foul territory. He takes it for the foot out. A high run lost it down the right field line, giving Rusty plenty of time. And so for the Yankees here in the fifth inning. Down in order. No runs, no hits, no one left, and there were no errors. Well, the game goes now to the last half of the fifth inning. The Houston Astros, nothing, and the New York Yankees, nothing. All right, Gene, and Jimmy Wynn leads off for the Astros as Mel Stottlemyre goes back to the mound. More action up there. No score in this ball game. The only meeting between these two ball clubs this year, the Astros edged out the Yankees, as you most know, I'm sure. Those of you who follow regularly on our broadcast, I want to say thanks for the nice uh, comments, letters, and cards, and so on. We appreciate them, and we haven't forgotten them. When checks the swing and fouls it off. Jimmy had a notion to give it a good uh, cut that time. Check the swing is strike one. When stuck out his first time at bat. Stottlemyre has allowed only two hits. A triple by Ronnie Brand, a single by Al Spengler. Mel is a low bone right-hander. The rock's back now and ready to pick. Turning away from it. High in at the shoulder. Wynn has the count of ball one and strike one. I would say between 45 and 50,000 spectators here tonight. And we've got a doubleheader tomorrow and doubleheader on Sunday. Opening game against the Village Monday. 
when takes breaking stuff low and inside. Many times, of course, uh, it's hard to tell exactly what kind of breaking stuff, so just as long as we keep it uh, just about in the area, I know that you're happy. Can't tell sometimes whether it might be a school ball, it could be a stinker. The pick hung on him, and he had him uh, fishing around out there, trolling around. He was committed already and went on through, and Jimmy gets uh, a little confirmation there from umpire and catcher. I was really fooled on that, wasn't I? Yep. Yes, you were. The count is ball two and strike two. No score. We're in the last out of the fifth inning. Now working. Quinn Swing hits the count on the left side. Boyer lets it go down to shortstop. Too bad. Over to first base in time. Boyer jumped off of the bench down there. The Astros figured that Quinn might have been safe on that. But the first base umpire, Larry Knapp, says out of there. And it's run away. Well, he's getting a little bit of needling off of the bench off to the right side. Here now is Bob Lillis. Bobby here, bounded by three. Third to first in the third inning. Lillis, 318 average. Six. Bob hits down the shortstop. Two back coming in, and Bob is momentarily then throws in time. Oh, boy, that pepper John is a classic first baseman, isn't he? Nifty around the base over there. And looks like there's nothing to it. Not two in a row. I've got it off. Short to first. And here is Walter Bond. A little off. Brand, I should say. Brand gets a nice uh, hand because they recall his demonstration of speed. Being a catcher, he is three to foot. And he powered one up the alley in right center. Just about 400 feet away for a triple. His first time at bat. Takes a strike. In and over. Barney Brand, of course, has done an outstanding job getting a chance to be regular with our Astros over from the Pittsburgh organization. All right, here's the pitch. Swung on, a hot, hot into medium deep center field. Tommy Craig just gliding in on Ricky there and has it for the foot out. Well, up and down in order for the Astros here in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, none left on. There were no errors. And so the team came tied. The Yankees will give it a try at the plate. And the score is Astros nothing and New York nothing. All right, Gene, thank you. Well, the Earthmen down there are taking care of the stores, uh, kind of manicuring the dirt portion of the infield. Oh, nifty job. That was their first try, and uh, they get a round of applause from a lot of the people here. Listen to that. We, of course, are honored to have the President of the United States, President Lyndon Johnson, visiting here tonight to see the first game ever in the world's first air-conditioned dome-covered stadium. And our governor, Governor John Connolly, and many other dignitaries, city and county officials. All right, here's the leadoff batter now. Mickey Mantle, and he swings and misses the strike one. The mighty Mickey Mantle, I recall in 1951, he was uh, coming along from uh, way, way, way down in the lower minor leagues, and uh, they said uh, two days before the season started, he hit hitting home runs all over the place, that he couldn't make the team. That one in the deep center field, win back up. He's on the warning track. Here the wall jump. Bulletin. 
Harrison from the KRLD newsroom. Harris, Roger Maris, sir. Strike one. Maris is looking for his first hit. He's walked and fly to center. And Roger's hitting a 240. Pitch one on and a high pop. Very shallow in the left field. Play goes out from short. And he's in front of Spangler and has it for the out. Lillard goes way on out there and makes a nice run back to haul that one down. Looking up over the shoulder. That brings on Joe Peppertone. The real stepper, this Peppertone. Mandel has Hobbit hitting one just over the barrier into the center field seat to the right of the runway. The first run of the ball game. The first home run ever in uh, two-team competition here. The opposing team competition. Put it that way. There's a drive going way back up into the mezzanine seat foul. And it's a foul strike for Peppertone. Two down. No base runners. Mantle was stroking left-handed against right-hand pitching. Most of you know that. And he got his homework. That ball up high. A ball and a strike. The count for a touchdown. And Tony Kubek waiting around. One to nothing. Yankees. Six spinning. And Farrell raising it way up high for the left shoulder. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Over for Flea's head. Out to the left of second base, going in for a base hit. And Peppertone turns and holds on as Wynn makes that throw right back in on top of the bag to Joe Morgan. And that was the reaction you heard from the crowd, that throw from Wynn to Morgan. Base hit, Peppertone, driving one out there into center field of the left of straight away. Bringing to the plate, Tony Kubek batting left-handed. And he's flat out both times, to center and to left, his first to set. All right, two down, one run across, the man at first. The pitch is high, and Brand turning around, daring the runner, steps on down at first base. Kubek has played in uh, 19 games prior to this evening, and has been up 62 times so far this spring. All right, here's Chris Farrell, a check over the shoulder of the pitch. Swung on him this, and he really breezed past him on that one. How do I to fire in that, Chris? Ball one and strike one with two down. A one to nothing ball game for those of you just dialing the pin. You want to you have to sit there for minutes and minutes and passing five, ten minute mark without getting your score. Well, setting his time, he's ready. A lead off at first. Bond holding up against the runner of the pick. Hold on, hit out to right center. Wynn going over. And Rusty going back. Let's see, Wynn says he's got it. He's got it over the shoulder on the warning track. Hey, a nice running catch out there. The roar of the crowd lets you know about it, and the Yankees get one run. They came up with two hits, had one left on, and there were no errors. We go now to the last half of the sixth inning. The score is the Yankees won, and the Astros nothing. Well, let's get down to business now. Dirk Farrell will come out and take his turn to the plate as we go for the last half of the sixth inning. Farrell has been up once and hit a smash in the thrown out second to first ground ball. Well, a low scoring affair for those of you just cutting in on your radio set right now. Here we are with the last of the sixth inning, and it's Yankees one and the Astros nothing, and Mickey Mantle smacks one straight away in the center field for a home run. Phil swings and smashes foul. He was trying to tie the ball game up. Well, when you first come out here, you know, I don't know, people standing around, we wonder, but will it fill up? Oh, yes. Just, uh, say, about 10, 12 minutes before the game got underway, you could see that fact that every seat was taken, and they sold standing room only uh, space. There's a flatter outside. Ball one and strike one. And between 45 and 50,000 people are here. And I tell you, they've enjoyed every minute, every pit so far, without a doubt. But there's so many things to see, and it's truly overwhelming to try to think it over and uh, describe this one. Low and outside. And, of course, uh, our business at hand is to describe this ball game. First and foremost, an accurate description with a little color around the edges. Right? Good. Ball two and strike one. Pearl is lead off man. Morgan and Spangle will follow. The pitch. And he takes it inside up tight against the hitter. And it's three balls in one strike. Hey, what have we got cooking up on the front burner here now, huh? Oh, so many things have been said about this after dome. And, um... That is just the beginning. To say that it is utterly spectacular is saying nothing, really. Oh, he got a strike on the inside edge, and Farrell had to bat like straight up in the air almost there. Then come on and throw it. I don't believe he can get it across, but he did. One to nothing, Yankees, and Sotomayor with a payoff. Here it is. And it's ball four. He's on. We get what represents the tying run at first base. 
And uh, Farrell uh, removes the helmet, and let's see what goes as he starts a bit over to the right. They're going to keep him in the ball game as Bernard Demuel puts on the windbreaker. King? Oh, I think it's a tribute. Uh, we might mention it right here to Johnny Keene, the New York Yankees, and Mickey Mantle for uh, his staying in the ball game as long as he has tonight, even though he is suffering from a very bad right leg. Indeed so, Gene. Well, uh, th- I don't... This isn't inspiring sort of a thing here. I don't know. This might uh, make anybody get well in a hurry just to come out here. But as you say, certainly 100% true uh, that we've got to say hats off to Mickey Mantle and Johnny Keane and all uh, the teammates of Mickey Mantle and those Yankees down there, too. All right, infield up a little bit now for double play ball. Joe Morgan hits it down to the first base. through there. He can't handle it. Into right field. Patrick Bell had his glove down and the ball bounced over. They might score him an error on that one, Gene. Let's see. It is E3. Error. Kirk held up at second base. So Morgan got one through. It seemed to bounce uh, just over the glove of Pepper John. He was trying to sort of shoot with his glove off to his right. He didn't get over in front of the ball, and it was not a smash either. All right, Al Spangler. And you can just almost look for the uh, sacrifice bunt, but whether you'll get it or not, well, we don't know for sure. And that's another thing, of course, that makes baseball such a great sport, isn't it, huh? You never know what to expect. Many times, the unexpected occurs. Uh, Boy is sweeping down from third base. The pick just hung on. He was swinging straight away and fouled it off at strike one. What about the down in spring training? The first baseman was creeping in, left the bag, you know, in a bunt situation, and the big, strong, muscular, uh, football-type left-hand batter took a mighty home run cut and hit a line drive right past his ear. <laughs> Boy, it was a run on time. The bunt situation. But now let's see, as uh, Busby has come up and yelled something down to Spangler off that uh, coaching side at third base, off of the line, and Boy, at lead has backed off to the very edge of the infield. That now comes in. Oh, a couple of sides. Start of my working the pitch. And he bunts off down third base play. Let's see if it's there. It's allowed to roll. And it's beyond the line. It's a big hit like that. It is. Oh, that is a safe. It's so sad. On the short line, just the side of it. And it's a big hit. I think we've got to roll it. Oh, what a throw in there. That's great. Oh, that was saving it pretty clear in that one. Johnny Blanchard has gone out to the mound and dropped the Mel Stottlemyre. And Rusty Storm is up there with Freeman on. Kurt Farrell, of course, is third. Joe Morgan is second. And Spangler getting his second base hit of the evening. This time, running one perfectly down third, allowed to roll. And uh, it died in fair territory. About four feet from the bag of third base. How do you like those apples? All right, here's Stottlemyre. The rock back to pitch. Low and outside for more on the rest of so the redhead from New Orleans is up there. Pete Mickelson is in the bullpen working now for the Yankees, a right-hander. Mickelson, a wonder up in ball game. Yankees leading. Bases loaded for the Astros. And President Johnson up there is on his feet. Let's see as uh, Rusty swings and fouls off the left side. The tension mounts. Oh, you cut it with a knife here. The Astros up against the mighty New York Yankees. The image has been created of the great Yankee baseball team down through the years, and it lives here. And all of its splendor, I guess you can say, honestly say it that way, in the colorful Astrodome. Even the Yankees are awed by this sight. But right now we've got a hot game going. Lucky pick low and away that broke off from the left-hand batter, and it took me a little bit of a... He's turning the ball slightly, sort of a screwball delivery. I noticed Paul Richards is up there in the box to greet our president and to um, pass along perhaps uh, answers to questions that could be uh, put in his direction. And if uh, anybody can answer him, he can, of course. Here's the pitch. Rusty swings and hits it down to the right track. And the knock down the second shot. Throw to second. High ball game. Kirk scores. The throw to second. Of course, it's finally there. And two runners are saved. It's a 1-1 tie. Houston and the New York Yankees. So Rusty is saved on the fielder's choice, RBI for Rusty, and Walter Bond, the bomber, steps up. Well, we could go on and on about great things that have been said about our stadium here, 
and you'll hear some 50,000 people telling you about it tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls everywhere, wait till you come out and see a game here. All right, the outfield set up deep. Enfield wants, wanting a ground ball for double play. Let's see what they get. Uh, throw the first, diving back in. Rusty is safe. Close play there. Boy, that Joe Pepitone, he's a fancy dance with that beloved first base, fellas. Just like there's nothing to it, playing that bag over there. All right, here's the pitch down. Rusty. Here's one hit down to the left side. Double play ball. Two back steps on second, throws to first. Got him. So Brown hits him to a double play that went six, stepping on the bag, going down to Pepitone. Two back to Pepitone. And draw a line under that one, will you? And for the Astros, tying up the ball again, getting one run. And that one little hit pumps and goes two men left on. There was one error. At the end of six innings of play, the score, the Yankees won and the Astros won. Well, here we are. We've reeled off. A 1-1 tie. Ready to go. Dean, are you all set to come back? Let's see. A tie ball game. Houston won and the Yankees won. All right, well, thank you, and uh, we're all set to move on in on the seventh. Tom Trice, the center fielder for the Yankees, batting left-handed here against Kurt Bell. A familiar figure has just shown up in the bullpen down the left of your line. He's wearing number 31, an old number 5 for Houston. Todd Neal, he's the pitching coach for the Yankees. There's a very high top foul. Van comes back, gives up on it, goes up into the mezzanine out of play, and it's like one. Right-hander Hal Rennes is now warming up for New York down the left of your line. Pete Nicholson warming up a few moments ago and stopped throwing. Crash has done it twice, lying to left field, top to shortstop. Score side 1-1, one, one, top of the seventh. Farrell goes into his windup and the pitch is fastball, the tie outside. And it's ball one and strike one. Well, the Turk has done a mighty fine job here tonight. He's allowed only four hits, and the only run came on Mickey Mantle's 415-foot home run to center field. Here's the pitch now. There's a slip pitch, and uh, Stash is trying to swing butt on that one to the right side. Reached out and just got a piece of it foul, and it's one ball to strike. Cleet Boyer will be up next. He'll be followed by John Blanchard. Turk has struck out only one batter tonight, and has given up one base on balls. And at one stage of this game, retired 11 batters in a row. Turk ready again now. Here's the one and two pitch. Swung on. Hopper right side. Little Joe moves over. Morgan scoops it up. Goes to Bond. They got him and there's one down. Turk bounces out second to first. Mantle's home run broke the uh, swing for Turk. Lee Boyer singled in the second inning and then Farrell retired 11 men in a row before Mantle hit the seat in center field. Here's Boyer, single in the second, called out on strikes in the fifth. He has been the only Yankee strikeout pitching tonight. Score tied 1-1. Houston, New York, top of the seventh inning. And Farrell's first pitch on the way to Boyer. Line drive, Spangler, left field. Al back got it. And there are two down. Line drive to left field. Hit right on the nose by Fleet Boyer for the second out. And that will bring up the Yankee catcher, John Blanchard. Down in the bullpen for Houston out in right field. Left-hander Hal Woodishick is starting to loosen up. And Hal ran up in the bullpen for the Yankees off the left side. Two out. Yankees scored first in the top of the sixth. The Astros came right back to tie it up. Big cut by Blanchard, and he missed it strike one. One strike to count. Actually, there are six levels in the Astrodome as far as seating is concerned a total of nine altogether here's the wind up in the next pitch by Turk fastball punched over third he was checking his swing it's in there for extra bases Blanchard on his way to second Strangler makes the pick up in fair territory and Blanchard slows up and pulls into second base with a stand up double Blanchard was checking his swing on that the ball hit his bat and he popped it right back over third well, that's the fifth hit for the Yankees tonight. Gives Blanchard one for three and brings up the pitcher, Mel Stottlemyre. Well, the Yankees now lead in hits five to four. Score side one one. Top of the seventh, two out, Blanchard on second base. Stottlemyre has fly to center and piled out Staub in right field. Right handed batter. Two out, Blanchard on second base. Frankie Corsetti, the third base coach for the Yankees, uh, motions out toward uh, second base to give Blanchard the correct out. Here's the stretch by Farrell now. Not too big a lead by Blanchard off second base. And Stottlemyre took a very late swing at a pitch uh, around the knees of the outside strike one. Boston Red Sox beat the Chicago Cubs today, 7-4, to another exhibition game. Chicago White Sox uh, defeated the Cincinnati Reds 8-3. Third 
Bell takes the stretch now. Pitch on the way to Stottlemyre. Very low and outside. And it's ball one and strike one. One one count. Stottlemyre batting with Blanchard on second, seventh inning. Yankees one, Astros one. Mantle Comer, the run for the Yankees. Here's the stretch now. Pitch on the way to Stottlemyre. Strike on the outside corner to me. One and two count on the Yankee pitches. Kirk checks over to sign again with Ron Brand. There have been no lineup changes tonight. One and two strikes by Bell. Line drive, a one hopper through the infield. Base hit, here comes Blanchard. His win through the play. They're going to get it. He's out. Time for the seventh inning stretch now as we go into the bottom of the seventh. With the score tied 1 1. Bob Astromani, Jimmy Wynn, and Bob Lillis will be facing Mel Stottlemyre. Cleveland San Francisco rained out today. Another uh, exhibition game, Minnesota 2. And uh, the Mets 1. And Philadelphia beat Pittsburgh 5 to 4. Here's Astro. Fly to center, bounce to shortstop. Right-handed batter. Outfield deep and around the left side. Stottlemyre, 23 year old right-handed. Throws low ball on. Howie Paulette, Houston pitching coach, is down to the bullpen with Howell with a stick as Woody continues to loosen up. Both starting pitches are still in. Stottlemyre and Fell. And the start of the seventh inning for Stottlemyre. He's allowed four hits, one run. Struck out one and walked one. Here's the pitch to Astro. Strike on the outside corner to me. And it's one and one. Well, tomorrow afternoon, we will have the Baltimore Orioles for you here at the Astrodome. A reminder that there are still seats available for tomorrow afternoon's game of the Orioles. Game time will be 1.30. Here's the pitch now. Swing and a miss by Astro. And Stottlemyre threw it a good pitch around the knees. And it's one ball, two strikes. Our broadcast time tomorrow, air time will be 1.15, game time 1.30. The Astros and the Orioles. And tomorrow night, the Yankees again. Sunday afternoon, it'll be New York. And Sunday night, the Orioles. Stottlemyre ready again. The pitch pass for Monty. Low outside, it's two balls, two strikes. And keep in mind the opening of the National League season on Monday night here at the Astrodome. And the opposition will be the Philadelphia Phillies. Nobody out, nobody on. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Yankees and the Astros are tied 1-1. Here's the next pitch by Stottlemyre. High pop-up off the left side. Fleet Boyer moving into foul territory now, about 30 feet off third. He's got it. There's one down. Now the fourth Jimmy Wynn comes on. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Astros Baseball Network. And this is KRLD. AM and FM Dallas with the baseball action is. It's three past nine. Right-handed batter Jimmy Wynn stepped on here with one out. Wynn struck out in the second inning and grounded out the shortstop in the fifth on a very close play. Stottlemyre checks the sign with John Blanchard. Here's the windup in the first pitch to win a right-handed batter. Ground ball hits the third. Boyer right on the edge of the draft. And on over to Pepitel, and there's two out. Wynn at the first ball pitch, a high ground ball to third to Boyer. Here's the shortstop, Bob Lewis. Three has not had a hit in this two times. He has found out the third and the shortstop. Stottlemyre retired the first seven men to face him tonight before Ron Brand tripled to the seats in right center field. Single by Spangler and a double by Bond in the fourth. First pick on the way to Lillis the ball. Astro scored in the sixth on a walk to Farrell. An error on the first baseman Pepitone on Morgan's ground ball. A single by Spangler and a fielder's choice ground ball. There's a line drive to second base. Handled easily by Bobby Richardson off the bat of Lillis to retire the side. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. At the end of seven innings of play, the Yankees won and the Astros won. Mickey Mantle will lead off for New York as we start the eighth, and the Astros now have a new pitcher. Left-hander Hal Woodeschick has come on to replace Kirk Bell. Kirk did a real fine job tonight, his best uh, showing of the spring. 
going seven innings, allowing just a home run by Mantle. He gave up six hits, struck out one, and walked one. Mantle now will be coming on as a right-handed batter for the first time tonight against the left-hander, Hal Woodichick. Score all tied up at 1-1. Eighth inning. Left-hander Steve Hamilton is starting to loosen up now, and the both end down the left field line for the Yankees. Here's Mantle. Two hits and three sets tonight. Singled in the first, homered in the sixth. And in between, he bounced out the second. This is the fourth game in which Woody Hitch has appeared this spring. Woody has only four innings under his belt. That is an actual spring competition. Of course, he's seen action in inter squad games and so forth. Mantle takes it low outside ball one. Woody has not given up a run in the four innings. He's allowed five hits. No earned runs, rather, but he has allowed four behind him. One walk and one strikeout. Left hander throws, and Mantle takes it low. Ball two, no strike. First half of the eighth inning. Score tied, 1 1. Woody has the sign again now from Ron Brand. Here's the pitch into Mantle. Tap uh, is uh, off of Mantle's foot, I believe. It just went foul. Brand picked it up off the left side of the plate. And it's ball two and strike one. Brand got the new baseball now from the plate umpire, Mel Steiner. Spangler left, wind setter, Staub right. Aspromonte third, and Lillard short. Morgan second base, Bond on first, and Brand the catcher. Ball two, strike one on Mickey Mantle. The left hander throws again, and Mantle starts to go, takes the strike on the outside corner of the knee. Held up on it. Ball two, strike two. Well, we start playing for keeps on Monday night when the Phillies will be in here at 7.30. Low inside, full count. To Mickey Mantle, three balls, two strikes. Woody is a sinker ball pitcher, and that's what has made him so effective as a reliever. Keeps the ball low in around the knees. And forces the batter to hit it on the ground. Half foul off the right side. That leg certainly is bothering Mantle. He doesn't uh, stand in there too well, although I... Uh, actually, for Mantle... He has a home run and a single tonight with one bad leg. But he certainly is not controlling himself too well at the plate. I think it bothers him a little bit more, batting right-handed. Here's the wind-up and the pitch now to Mantle. Low ball four, he walks. So Mantle pops on down to first, and that's the third time that Mantle has been on in four appearances at the plate. Art Lopez is going to run for it now. Arturo Lopez running for Mantle at first. Woodichick has walked the first time to face him. Mantle gets a nice hand. I mentioned uh, when we started our broadcast tonight that uh, it appeared that Mantle would be making only a token appearance because of that uh, hamstring muscle injury, but he had just been taken out here in the eighth inning. Here's Bobby Richardson. Arturo Lopez running for Mantle on first base, and Richardson tried to butt, and he missed it. Strike one. Both uh, Aspermani and Bond coming in from third and third. Two bases on balls given up by Houston pitching now. Farrell allowed one in the seven inning he worked, and uh, Woodisick has just walked Mantle to lead off the eighth. Roger Maris will be up next. Watching for the butt again now, and Richardson missed again on the butt attempt. Really slid up on the handle of that bat that time, and Woodisick throws the fastball right by him. Two strikes to count. Aspermani is backed up a little bit now with a two-strike count on Bobby Richardson. Bond is still holding up on first. Here's the stretch now by Woodichick, and Richardson uh, takes the ball. It's low and inside, and it's one ball and two strikes. One, two count. Outfield is fairly well straight away here for Richardson. Staub, uh, if anything, is shaded off the opposite side. They're giving Richardson right center field. Arturo Lopez takes his lead away from first base. Woodichick throws on the way to Richardson. He got him. Ball strike three. There's a sharp curve that caught the outside corner to knees. Richardson has been called out on strikes. He is the second strikeout victim for New York tonight. Both were caught looking. Boyer was struck out by Farrell in the fifth. Here's Roger Maris. One out. Arturo Lopez running for Mantle on first. This score is tied 1-1, top of the eighth. Maris is off for two officially tonight. Plains and misses the first pitch. Strike one. He walked in the first inning. And is also fly to center, popped out shortstop. Ron 
Got it on first, low first. Here's the pitch on the way to Maris. It's a little bit too high. Hector Lopez loosening up along with Hamilton now in the bullpen down the left field line. So Lopez uh, may go into the outfield. He may just keep Art Lopez in there. Here's the pitch on the way. There's a line drive right field. Stab in fast. He got it right at the shoot job. Double play drive. Not in time. The ball got away from Don. They had him. Good catch by Rusty Staub. Right off the shoot job. They almost doubled Lopez in first. But the ball dribbled out as Bond Smith came in on one off. Well, they almost had the twin killing on that one, but Arturo Lopez got back in. Sinking line drive to right field, handled by Rusty Starr. Two away, and now here's the first baseman for New York, Joe Pepitone. Gene, do you have the feeling that I do, that these boys have adjusted both uh, teams uh, away from all the spectacular here and playing the top flight of band of baseball? Real nice game to watch. Everything is running along smoothly here tonight, and... Uh, I think you get sort of engrossed in the ball game, and if it's at all possible, you forget where you are, and that's pretty difficult to do here. Here's the pitch on the way to Pepitone. There's a looper, base hit, left center field. Lopez on his way to third, picked up by Jim Wynn. The throw is back into second base, and Lopez holds up at third. Joe Morgan takes the throw back in from Wynn. Throw a looping single to left center field off the bat of Joe Pepitone, his second hit of the night. Gives him two for four. Put Yankee runners on first and third with two men out. And the batter now is the shortstop, Tony Kubek. Ron Brand has called time, and he's going out to talk to Woodyshick, uh, Walt Bond, over from first base. So there's the first hit off Woody. And he has coupled that uh, base hit with a walk. So the Yankees are threatening here in the top of the eighth in a 1-1 ball game. Arturo Lopez at third base. Joe Pepitone on first, and here's Tony Kubek. All three times that Kubek has been up tonight, he's flied out. Twice the center, once the left. Long stretch by Woodacek. Here's the pitch. Spot attempt, miss. That's the third spot attempt by a Yankee in this inning. Off the pitching of Woodacek, and they have missed all three of them. Thank one. Two runs have scored in this ball game. Each club came up with a run in the sixth. Lopez comes down off third. Not too big a lead by Pepitone off this left-hander, Hal Woodacek. Here's the pitch to Kubek. There goes the runner down. Brand takes the throw to second, and that'll, uh, uh, he takes the throw to second, and then started to go to third. So Pepitone has moved up on the seal of second base. Actually, he got about two-thirds of the way down and then stopped. But he still did not draw Brand's throw. So it's a stolen base for Pepitone. First base open now. Yankee runners on second and third, two out. And the one ball, one strike count on left-handed hitter, Tony Kubek. Center fielder Tom Trace will be up next. Woody takes the full wind-up now, and the pitch is a good strike on the inside corner of the move. Oh, that was a dandy pitch. That's the same pitch that he struck Richardson out on, I believe. Only uh, Kubek, it came inside around the knees, the left-handed better. One ball, two strikes. Two out. Pepitone on second. Arturo Lopez on third. Score tied 1-1. One, one. Top of the eighth. Woodacek throws again. Now to Kubek. Swing and a miss and he's stuck in line. Well, the side is retired as Kubek goes down swinging. I don't know whether that was a change-up or not. Woody's been fooling around with that. That's the second strikeout. Three strikeouts for Houston pitching. No runs, one hit. No errors. Two men were left on base. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning now with the score, New York 1, Houston 1. We've had a defensive change now for New York in left field. Hector Lopez has taken over in left field for Mickey Mantle. Mantle lifted as Arturo Lopez ran for him, and now it's Hector Lopez in left. Fresh and center, there's right. Here's the catcher, Ron Brand now. Bottom of the eighth inning, score tied 1-1. One, one. Mel Stottlemyre still on the mound for the Yankees. Graham has a triple tonight. He picked that up in the third. Ball was hit about 395 feet back into right center field. Graham to right-handed batter. Ground ball to third. Boyer back to the big hop. Got it? On over the first base to Pepitone, and there's one out. That'll bring up Hal Woodyshick. Well, Graham hits the first ball pitch and bounces out to third. Here's Woody now. One out, nobody on base. What a shake the right-handed batter. Here's the 
pitch on the way now. There's a strike around the knees. One out, nobody on. Top of the batting order, Joel Morgan will be up next. Donald Meyer looks over the sign again now from Blanchard. Here's the pitch on the way. There's a ball that's in too low. What a shift the batter making his first plate appearance. Donald Meyer comes down off the mound. One ball, one strike to count on Woodishick. The official paid attendance tonight is 47,876. Swing and a miss by Woody, and it's one ball, two strikes. 47,876. One ball, two strikes on Woodishick. One out, nobody on base. Here's the windup and the pitch by Saddlemeyer. Low and outside, and it's two balls, two strikes. About 3,000 fans are standing tonight to watch this one. The seating capacity, uh, 45,000. Ball, two strikes, two. Here's the pitch on the way now, and it's a uh, low pitch, low and inside, and it's a full count of three balls, two strikes. This, of course, is the largest crowd ever to see a baseball game in Houston. The previous high was 30,027. Watch the doubleheader against the Los Angeles Dodgers on June the 10th, 1962. Ball four, and what a stick is on. Donald Meyer lost the pitcher, and Woody moves on down to first. That's the second base on balls given up by Stottlemyre tonight, and in both instances, he has walked the pitcher. He walked Farrell in the sixth inning. Largest single game crowd uh, to watch a game in Houston was uh, 28,669. 47,876 paid tonight. Here's little Joe Morgan now. They're watching for the bunt, and Morgan made no attempt to bunt. It took a fast strike on the outside corner up around the letters. Now Johnny Keene is sending uh, right-hander Hal Renniff back into the bullpen out in left field. Renniff now warming up against the New York. Woody takes his lead off first base. One out. And the score tied 1-1 last half of the eighth. Here's the pitch to Morgan. Strike two. Boy, you're watching for a bunt, and... Uh, Morgan has taken the first two pitches, and he gets behind two strikes. Al Spangler will be up next. Woody hangs close to Joe Pepitone on first now, waiting for Stottlemyre to get set. New York one, Houston one. Iron down again by Stottlemyre. Two strikes on Morgan, and the pitch is inside, just above the knees. One ball, two strikes. One, two count. Haven't done too many threats tonight by either ball club. Yankees scored on Mantle's homer in the sixth. And the Astros came right back in the bottom half to tie. Here's the pitch to Morgan. Swing and a ground ball to Pepitone. Goes down to throw it away in the left field. And Woody's going to third. Two back couldn't get it. That'll be an error on Bill Pepitone. He not only threw that wildly, he threw it way, way up in the air. Kubek went way up to try to stop it, but it had to be fielded by Hector Lopez in left field. So on the air, Morgan holds it first, and Woody goes to third. Here's Al Spangler. That's the third New York error tonight. Two of them have been on set the stone. And the other one was on Bobby Richardson. Here's Spangler now. He has two for three. Both of his hit singles. Now Boyer, uh, with the left-handed batter up there, is playing in on the grass. He is getting his instructions now from Johnny Keene, and after looking in the dugout, he backed up a couple steps. And Keene evidently does not believe that Spangler will punt here. One out. Uh, with Woodachick on third, they're not watching for the squeeze too closely. Here's the pitch. Spangler hits a foul ball. That'll be up into the seal seats off the left side. Oh, that took a big time. <laughs> and it's strike one. Yankees evidently figuring here that uh, although it is possible that Spangler might try to bunt one here, that with Woodachick on third, it may be just a little bit remote. But Spangler keeps an eye on Jim Busby, and Boyer is uh, still being cautious about where he plays on third base. 
Lead run on third. Score side 1-1, one, one, eighth inning. One out, runners on first and third. Spangler lined to center field in the first inning, singled in the fourth, and then beat out that front hit in the sixth that rolled uh, dead in third territory just in front of third. Boyer's just a step in the grass. Now he creeps in again a little bit. Here's the pitch into Spangler. Al taps one back over Stottlemyre's step. Here's the play at the plate by two back, and what a shift is out. A big bouncer over Stottlemyre's step. Kubek played it on a bounce. Got it into John Blanchard. And what a stick is out of the play. So with two down, Morgan has moved up to second base. Spangler safe at first on the field is Joy. And what a stick out short to the catcher. Here's Rusty Starr now. Rusty looking for his first step. Slide out, hit into a double play, and the safe on the field is Joy. Starr is over three. Infield is back now, playing at normal depth with two outs. Stottlemyre checks his defense, gets up in the rubber now to get his sign. Here's the stretch to look back at Morgan on second. The first pitch in to stop. This cut by Rusty. <laughs> he gave it a big swing that time, and he missed it. Strike one. One strike on Staub. Two out, two men on. Runners on as a result of a walk and an error on the first baseman, Joe Pepitone. Here's the pitch now to stop. High top foul. No play. Boyer stays over, but that goes deep up into the seat. Back of the Yankee dugout. And Rusty gets behind here on the Yankee right-hander. Two strikes. Well, we hope that you can make it for tomorrow afternoon's game out here. The competition tomorrow will be the Baltimore Orioles of the American way. Game time is 1.30. Airtime tomorrow will be 1.15. Tomorrow night it's the Yankees again at 7.30. Stottlemyre up on stop, two strikes. Spangler at first, Morgan at second. With second base occupied and two out, Al getting a big lead. Pepitone back off the bag. The pitch is way outside, he almost threw it away. And Blanchard made a good save on a high outside fastball. One ball, two strikes. Last half of the eighth. Yankees have out hit Houston, 7-4, score tied 1-1. Stottlemyre takes quite a bit of time now. He goes back on the edge of the grass, back of the mound. Outfield is pretty well straight away. They're pulling Staub a little bit off the right side. Straight to shaded at right center field. Stottlemyre ready again now. Watch the second day. Here's the pitch into Rusty. Ball outside, another wide one. Right around the belt with two balls and two strikes. Two, two counts. Right-hander Hal Rennett in the bullpen for New York. R-E-N-I, double F, Rennett. Morgan takes his lead away from second base. Bangle well off the bag at first with Pepitone deep back of the bag. Kubek fakes to hold uh, Morgan close to second base. Here's the 2-2 two, two stretch to pitch into Rusty, and he slams one to keep right there. Roger Maris there, though. He's got it to retire the side. Well hit ball by Staub. All in by Roger Maris. No run, no hit. One error, and two men were left on. He's going out of the top of the ninth inning. With the score, New York won, and Houston won. Full house here tonight. They push the button. And the gigantic display across the scoreboard in center field has just gone up. Here's Tom Sykes now. Ninth inning score tied 1-1. One, one, and Al Woodisick out for his second inning. Woody gave up a single and a walk. In the eighth inning. First pitch to strike. Bouncing ball is foul. Persetti tries to field that one and gets by him and goes to the Yankee bullpen. Strike one. Strike now, who also is a switch hitter as his mantle, batting right-handed. Against Farrell, Strike was also three. Line to left, top to shortstop, and bounced out to second base. Nobody out, nobody on, ninth inning. Here's the pitch by Woody. Ball, low outside. One ball and one strike on Tom Fish. Fish will be followed by Cleet Boyer, and then Johnny Blanchard. With a stick throws again now, and Trish takes the strike on the outside corner of the knee. One ball and two strikes. One, two count. Here's 
the start of the windup in the next pitch now. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. So what a check that's his third strikeout. He struck out two in the eighth inning. That's the third strikeout for Woodishek. Harold struck out one. That will bring up the third baseman, Cleet Boyer. Well, we've seen a mighty splendid ball game here tonight. Been a lot of action. One home run and that hit by Nicky Mantle. One out, nobody on. Boyer's had one hit tonight. There's the ball, and it's a little bit low and outside for ball one. Boyer singled in the second inning, was called out on strikes in the fifth, and lined out to left field in the seventh inning. Woody goes into the windup again. Here's the pitch down. Boyer hits a foul ball right at his feet, and it bounces out into fair territory. And it's one ball, one strike. One, one count. Bill Lins now has come on as a pinch hitter here for the Yankees. L-I-N-Z, right-handed batter, and the first pitch a little bit too high for ball one. One ball, no strike. Lynn's batting for Blanchard. Blanchard, the left-handed batter, has been taken out now on right-handed hitter. Still Lynn's batting for him. There goes the runner down. Swing and a line drive. Base hit right up the middle. Boyer moves to third. Wins throws back to Joe Morgan at second base. So the Yankees execute the hit and run. As Boyer breaks to second base, and Lynn sends a pinch single right over second base to put Yankees on first and third with only one out. And now we're going to have a pinch batter here for the pitcher, Mel Stottlemyre. Pedro Gonzalez is coming on to hit. Gonzalez now. Pedro Gonzalez. This is be the second pinch hitter for the Yankees as uh, New York now has put runners on first and third. Lynn singling on a line drive in the center field. Fresh struck out, Boyer walked, Lynn has singled. And with this ball game tied 1-1 one, one top of the ninth, the Yankees are threatening. Pedro Gonzalez hitting 182 so far this spring. He has one run batted in and one double. Here's Gonzalez, right-handed hitter. Morgan now trying to get some instructions in the dugout whether to... Uh, play a little bit in or not. Here's the stretch. First pitch into Gonzalez. Swing and a miss at uh, Woodisick's fastball around the knees and it's strike one. One strike in Gonzalez. Left fielder Al Spangler is deep. Boyer on third. Lynn's on first and only one out. Here's Woodisick's next pitch to Gonzalez. Foul ball. Right off of Brand's hand and it goes back into the base of the screen. And Gonzalez gets behind here two strikes. Morgan and Lillis at second and shortstop are just a shade in front of double play depth. They'll be trying to cut off the run at the plate here if the ball is hit to them. And right now, Woodisick out in front of Gonzalez, who's batting for Sottlemyer two strikes. Here's Woody's pitch now. A foul ball. Hopper off the right side. So the count holds the two strikes. Top of the batting order, Hector Lopez who is batting in the spot vacated by Mickey Mantle, will be up next. Houston and New York are tied 1-1. Top of the ninth inning. Here's the stretch by Woodisick. The pitch to Gonzalez. Ground ball in the hole. Lillis goes to second. Out. Double play ball. Got him. Lillis had to go to his right in the hole on that one. He's got Lynn coming down on the throw to Morgan. And the relay to Walpon completes the double play and retires the side. No run, one hit, no errors. One man was left on base. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning, and the score is still all tied up. New York won, and Houston won. We have some changes now for New York. Bob Smith is now catching. And right-hander Hal Lennett is on the mound. So those are the changes for New York. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Astros Baseball Network. And this is KRLD AM and FM Dallas, where the baseball action is at 9.33. Well, we're on to the bottom of the ninth inning now with a 1-1 tie. 
And Warren Rowe will win it for the Astros. Here's Walt Barnes. Doubled in the left center field in the fourth inning. Has grounded the first base and is hit into a double play. Walter, left-handed batter, Hal Rennes, first pitch. And Walt hits a foul ball, headed upstairs off the left side. Goes up into the mezzanine section, and it's like one. One strike on Bond. Ran up for right-handed. This is the seventh game in which he has appeared for New York this spring. He's pitched 13 innings and allowed eight hits. Here's the pitch to Bond. That's uh, made him dance around, right at his feet. Low inside pitch, one ball, one strike. Lennon has uh, walked five, struck out four, and has an earned run average of 2.77 through his first 13 innings. One one tie, ninth inning. Bond will be followed by Bob Astromani and then Jim Wynn. Right hander throws on the way to Walter now. Brown foul in behind Jimmy Adair coaching at first base. Hops out in the fair territory. And Lennon gets out in front of Bond. One ball, two strikes. One, two count. 47,876. Paid crowd here tonight at the Astrodome. Monday night will be opening night against the Phillies. Baltimore here tomorrow afternoon. Yankees tomorrow night. Red up Texas sign again now from Schmidt. Here's the wind up and the pitch in. And Bond lo- lined one base hit in the right center field. Bond makes the turn. Picked up by Trey. And uh, Bond holds on with a single. There's a soft liner to the right of Bobby Richardson. And Houston has the lead man on. And here's Bob Astrovani. That's the first hit, of course, off Rennick. The fifth hit for Houston tonight. Yankees have out hit Houston tonight 8 5. We have Emily Tracy with us tonight, Miss Astro of 1965, who was elected uh, last year, you may recall. Now to look over the first. Here's the pitch on the way. Astro bunts one beautifully off the right side, but it goes foul. Started out very good on the grass, but then turned sharply and went foul. So Astro Body's attempt to uh, bump the runner up, foul ball, strike one. Not surprised to find Stan Sterrett in command over there. Stanley, you have some good duty there. Emily Tracy here, as I mentioned, Miss Astro, 1965. Emily, nice to have you with us. And Stanley, you're in trouble. <laughs> Astro back in again now. Steve Boyer in close on the glass of third. 1-1 one, one tie. Houston trying to get Bond around. He has singled off in the inning. One strike on Astro Marty. Here's the stretch by Rennett. And the pitch on the way. Swings away. Goes back to Rennett. Play back to Kubek, out of second. Throw a double play to Pepitone. So they switched the strategy on the first foot attempt went foul, and then Estramati swinging away is banged into a double play. Back to Hal Rennett. Pitcher to shortstop to first. Here's Jimmy Wynn now. Two out. Well, we've had just about everything in this ball game tonight. Some real good defensive plays, the home run. And we've had quite a few double plays. That's the third double play that the Yankees have pulled off tonight. Here's Jim Wynn, right-handed batter, and Rennett, first pitch on the way. And Wynn takes a strike on the inside corner of the belt strike one. Astros have pulled off one double play tonight, so we've had four in the ball game. Two out, nobody on. Bottom of the ninth inning. The pitch to win. Strike two called. That was a pretty fair pitch. They just cut away from Wynn on the letters on the inside corner. And it's two strikes. Stottlemyre went the first date for the Yankees. Gave up one run, allowed four hits, walked two, and struck out one. Red has two strike pitch to win. Low outside of ball. One and two. Well, it's getting mighty close to that time now. When the National League season will be getting underway. Houston's fourth year in the National League. Monday night here at the Astrodome against the Phillies. 7.30 start time. We hope that you fans will come out and see that one. That's the night we start playing for keep. Here's the one and two pitch to win. Fastball, line inside. Ball two, strike two. Yankee outfield is swung around the left side. They're playing Jim pretty well back. Lopez in left. That's Hector Lopez. Fresh in center, Maris in right. 
Lee Boyer, Tony Kubat, Bobby Richardson, Joe Pepitone on the inside. Ball two strike, two wind up by Rennett. The pitch to win. Swung on, base hit, center field. Price comes to his left and right center to field the ball. Wynn holds on to first base. <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. Wynn had to dive back into first as uh, Bobby Richardson faced him off. He cocked his arm as if he were going to go to first base. And Wynn, who had made the wide turn, dove back in on his stomach. But there was no throw. Well, that's the second hit in this inning. The first hit, Bond, was the race on a double play ball. The Astros now picked up their sixth hit of the ball game, two out, and win it first. Here's Bob Lillis. Well, the flea has been up three times without a hit. Grounded out twice and wind out. Here's the stretch now. Throw to first and win gets back in. Joe Pepitone holding up against Wynn on first base. Bob Lewis, well, there goes Wynn. No, he holds up. There's a tap to third. Boyer backs up. Easy play to second base. Wynn is out there to retire the side. Wynn started to break on that and then held. As Lewis hits a bouncing ball to Boyer at third base. And the play down to Bobby Richardson to force Wynn. And we go into West Lennings here tonight. No runs on two hits, so we're now as one man left on base. So as our ball game moves on to the top half of the tenth, the score is still all tied up. New York won and Houston won. Here's the top of the batting order for New York, top of the tenth inning, Hector Lopez. This is Hector Lopez, first time at bat. He took over for Mantle in left field. Al Woodichick, now starting his third inning. Lopez hitting 311 this spring. One double, no runs batted in. Woody pitch low inside ball one. One and nothing. Now this is our 21st game of the spring and our first extra inning game. Lopez starts to go, holds up on a strike on the inside corner of the letters. Ball one, strike one. Bobby Richardson in the on-deck circle, and then Roger Barrett. With a six throws again. Now low inside pitch to Hector Lopez. And it's ball two and strike one. Score tied 1-1. It's been that way since the sixth. When Mantle homered, and the Astros came right back in the bottom half to tie it up. Ball, no, a call strike up around the letters. So Lopez takes the two-two count. Manager Lumen Harris... Has gone all the way with the regulars except for the pitcher. Ground ball foul. He golfed that one into the starts to go in the Yankee dugout back to third. Run down by the third base umpire, Al Salerno, the American League. Ball two, strike two. Nobody out, nobody on base. Top of the tenth inning. Here's the windup by Wittichick in the pitch. Now Lopez hits a ball that is just outside the third foul. That's where Monty makes the play in foul territory. More than 250 news media representatives from throughout the nation are here at the Astrodome tonight. Of course, that's pictures and stories going all over the world. There's a swing and a miss, and he struck him out. That's a pretty good pitch by Woody, a curveball. And Lopez goes down swinging. That probably was more of a slider than a curveball, because Woodachick claims he does not throw the curve. That's the fourth strikeout for Woodachick since he came on in the eighth inning, and the first pitch to Bobby Richardson outside ball one. Richardson has uh, not had a hit tonight in four times. He was called out on strikes his last time up. Little right-handed batter. There's a hard hit ground ball to Lillis on one hop. The flea goes to first. And two men are out. Richardson grounds out short to first. Lillis to Bond two away, and that will bring up Roger Maris. Yankees have a total of eight hits tonight. Six of them off Kirk Bell in the seven-inning T-Works. And uh, Woodachick has given up two. Maris has not had a hit. He's 0 for 3. First time up tonight, he drew a base on ball. Left-handed batter looks to the soft strike up around the letters. Strike one. One strike on Maris. Yankees and the Astros are tied up 1-1 here in the 10th inning. Maris starts to go and holds up a curveball that broke low on outside. 
Woody's throwing more soft pitches tonight, and it could be that he may be experimenting a little bit with a changeup. Outfield is very deep for Maris. Two out. Ball one and strike one. The left-hander throws again now. There's a high foul. This will be up into the seat back over the screen. And it's one ball, two strikes. Forty-seven thousand eight hundred and seventy-six fans watching this one tonight. And two games here tomorrow. In the afternoon, it'll be Baltimore and Houston. And the Yankees are back tomorrow night against the Astros. Here's Woodishick pitch on the way. Now, that hit him. Maris is hit in the right arm. I think it got him in the biceps or above the elbow. And he doesn't seem to be bothered by it and runs down to first base. So Maris is hit by a pitch. Two out, runner on first base. And here's the first baseman for New York, Joe Pepitone. Pepitone has singled his last two times up. In the sixth and the eighth innings, and prior to that, he flied out twice. Spangler and then Jim Wynn. Maris takes his lead away from Bond on first base. Pepitone is almost hit. Throw to first base, and just back in time. Maris just got back in ahead of the throw by Brand to Bond. All right, Pepitone had to move in a hurry on that one, right up underneath the whiskey. And Brand took advantage of it as Pepitone was out of the way. A right-handed, a, a left-handed batter. He shot a quick throw down to Bond. But Maris back in time. That's inside again. So Woodishick uh, has hit Maris, the left-handed batter, in the arm. And then the next two, or the first two pitches to Pepitone, have been inside to a left-handed hitter. So Woody now has suddenly got a little bit wild, high and inside to a left-handed player. Brand goes out to talk to him. Two out. Lopez is struck out. Richardson is bounced out. Maris has been hit by a pitch. Score tied 1-1. One, one. We're in the tenth inning. Woody has the sign again now. Maris takes a pretty good lead off this left-hander, and uh, Woodisick goes to first. But not in time to get Maris. Left-handed batter, Yankee first baseman Joe Pepitone. Here's the next pitch. Foul ball. I said it's for the mezzanine off the left side or the second seating level here in the afternoon. Ball two and strike one. Two one count. Outfield is deep for Pepitone and they're swung around the right side. Maris again away from first base. Here's what a six pitch. Ground ball to the shortstop. Bob Lillis goes to second to Morgan. Force. On Maris, to retire the side. So the Yankees are out on the top of the tenth inning. No runs and no hits, no errors. One man was left on base. Bottom of the tenth inning coming up now with a score still tied. Yankees one, Astros one. Bottom half of the tenth inning now, and Ron Brand will lead off for the Astros. And we'll have the pitcher, Hal Woodishick, in the top of the batting order, Joe Morgan. Hal Brand has had the longest hit tonight for Houston, a triple back in the third. Ball was hit around 395 feet or so. Walt Barnes uh, hit the left center field a double, went just about as far. Last two times, Brand has slid out and bounced out. Here's Brennan wind up in the first pitch, and Brand takes a uh, one outside for ball one, one and nothing. One other night game being played in the exhibition circles tonight. Detroit in the seventh inning, trailing Milwaukee five to three. Foul ball. Right behind the plate, up and over the screen. One ball and one strike. Brand is not a very big fella, but uh, occasionally he will show some power. And he has pretty fair speed for a catcher. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch by Rennes. Brand takes a good, fast strike on the outside corner of the letter. And it's one ball and two strikes. Ball game has been tied since the sixth. It's 1-1 here in the bottom of the tenth inning. Brennan Freddy again now. Here's the pitch on the way to Brand. There's a ground ball to deep shortstop. Beautiful stop by Kubek and the throw in time. <laughs> oh, boy. A little bit unconscious on that one, but he made a great play on it, going to his right back in the hole. He struck that glove in just the right spot, and Brand has been thrown out towards the third. Here's how would it He's been at that only once tonight. That was in the eighth when he threw a base on ball. What a 
check the right-handed hitter. One out, nobody on base. Bennett has the sign now from Bob Schmidt, and the first pitch into Woodichick is a low outside pitch for ball one. Woody steps out to read his third base coach, Jim Busby, now. Joe Morgan in the on-deck circle off the right side. Leonard throws, and Woody takes the strike on the inside corner of the belt. And it's ball one and strike one. Game time tomorrow afternoon, 1.30, against the Baltimore Orioles. Woody hits a foul up into the seat back off the right side. And he gets behind on right up one ball, two strikes. Hector Lopez in left, Tom Price in center, Roger Maris in right field. And when up set again now, here's the one and two pitch to Wittichick. Team section time. Over the plate but low, Wittichick started to go but held up on it. So the count moves out to two balls, two strikes. Two, two counts. Stottlemyer went the first eight for New York. And allowed one run on four hits. The pitch to Wittichick. Got him that time. That evidently was the slider that broke away from Wittichick up around the letters and caught the inside corner. And Wittichick has been called out on strike. And that's only the second strikeout of Houston batters tonight. Jimmy Wynn struck out in the second inning. Wittichick is caught looking here in the tenth inning. Two away, and here's Joe Morgan. Little Joe has uh, not had a hit, although the last two times up, he has bothered Joe Pepitone. And he has forced Pepitone to make errors on the last two times that Morgan has hit that way. That ball, touched to go, and then uh, held up in time, ball one. Morgan is grounded out to second base and grounded out to Pepitone unassisted. Safe on an error in the sixth and safe in the eighth on an error. Strike call. Just caught the outside corner above the knees. Ball one and strike one now on Morgan. Two out. Nobody on. In the bottom of the tenth inning. And the Yankees and the Astros are all tied up at 1-1. With Morgan, a left-handed batter up here. Boyer's on the grass in front of third. Raniff throws again now, and Morgan takes a very high pitch for ball two, and it's two and one. Two balls, one strike. Raniff now has allowed two hits in the inning and two-thirds that he has worked, and both hits came in the ninth inning. As a looper back over Richardson, that base hit in the right center field. Tom Price makes the scoop up on it, and Morgan holds him to first with a single. Well, that's the third hit that Raniff has given up. Houston's seventh hit. The Yankees now lead by one in that department, eight to seven. Here's Al Kramer. Well, Al has had two hits tonight. One of them was a bunch of third. Now he's up here with two down and Morgan on third. Time is called as uh, Renup is going to tie a shoe. Spangler, left-handed batter. One home run in this game by Mickey Mantle. Batting left-handed on Turk Farrell. Hit one into the center field seat. Here's the stretch. A lob throw to first by Rennick. And uh, Joe Morgan gets back in. And a quick throw back over this time to Pepitone. And Morgan again back in there. Get Rio Gusto in a great light there. Get Schlitt. Morgan edges away from first. Got to watch him over there. There he goes. There's a swing and a miss. A throw by Smith, and they did not get him. Stolen base. <laughs> Two back over to cover on Smith's throw, and Morgan just beat him in. That's the fourth stolen base for Morgan this spring. He has tried four times. Now the Astros have the winning run in scoring position with two outs and good solid base wrap here now by Spangler with Mina victory. Al has two for four. Morgan possesses great speed. He stole 47 bases last year in the Texas League. Doesn't take too big a lead. Kubek is shaded around on him to hold him close. Let us pitch on the way to Spangler. There's a fly ball left field. Hector Lopez coming fast. Ball there. Oh, look at that catch. Sweet boy. He's up in the air. Actually, he can overrun the ball. And a retired to side. Boyer, with his back to third base, actually reached 
high over his head and behind him to spare that one. And Houston has been retired here in the tenth inning. And Spangler fouls out to the third baseman, Cleet Boyer, down the left field line. No runs in the inning on one hit. There were no errors. One man was left on base. Our ball game moves to the top of the eleventh inning now and still tied. Here's the pitch to Kubat. Just missed outside of the knees and it's one ball and one strike. Score tied 1-1 as we play ball in the top of the eleventh inning. New York and Houston. Quite a ball game for the opening game in the Astrodome. There's a ball low outside. Ball two and strike one on Kubek. Kubek has struck out once tonight. Wittishik struck him out in the eighth. And the other three times, he's flied out. Twice to center and once to left. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Hopper to first base. Bond comes in, makes the play easily at first. Unassisted one down. So Tony Kubek opens the 11th by grounding easily down the first base side to Walt Bond. That will bring up the center fielder, Tom Trash. Trash, a switch hitter, is batting right-handed. Trash is 0 for 4 tonight, and uh, Wittichick also struck him out in the ninth inning. Pete Mickelson is starting to warm up again for New York down the left field line. Ball is outside. Hot field is deep for Trash. And they're playing this right-handed batter to pull. One out, nobody on. Al Wittesick, southpaw. Here's the pitch into Trash. A little bit outside of the knees. Ball two, two nothing. Woody now has, uh, is now in his fourth inning. This is his longest spring of the spring. And he's given up two hits. Pitch to Trash. Fouled off. Hopper off the right side of the plate. Actually, Wittesick now is on the verge of uh, pitching as much tonight as he had in any of the previously regularly scheduled spring games. Ball two and strike one on Tom Trash. Foul ball. That hits the uh, guy wires uh, holding the screen and then pops up into the seat behind the plate. Ball two, strike two. Well, it has been quite a night for the opening of the Astrodome here this evening. And it's not over yet. We have a 1-1 ball game in the 11th. There's a high fly ball. Deep left field. Stanger back in the track, way back in the corner. He's got it. Ball hit about 335 feet down the left field line. And a mighty, mighty high one as Fresh is flied out two away. There's Pete Boyer. Boyer has one of the eight Yankee hits tonight, a second-inning single, and on the official side as one for three. Called out on strikes, lined out, and the last time up, Wittichick walked him. Cleet Boyer, right-handed batter. And Wittichick's first pitch to him is a swing and a ground ball to third. Astros' first chance tonight. There's a throw to first. They got him to retire the side. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. At the end of ten and a half innings to play, New York won, Houston won. Hector is not in the plans, of course, as a starter for New York, but a uh, good man to have around, as is John Blanchard, both uh, good utility men. There's a foul ball that's fielded by Vern Benson, the Yankee coach at first, and he shoots it back after with a kick. And it's one ball and one strike. Well, as we watch the amazing things that have happened here tonight in this amazing palace, you sort of look on to when the thing could suddenly be transformed. To, oh, Woody, watch that one. He really threw that one away. <laughs> that pitch slipped completely out of his hand. And it hit about 30 feet back over Ron Brand's head up against the screen. Ball two and strike one. All the field seats here, 10,000 of them, can be moved around to position in for football. Here's the pitch on the way to Hector Lopez. Very low in the middle. The pass and strike one. Woody has given up two bases on balls and really has had only one wild string. That was in the tenth inning when he hit Roger Maris and then got behind on Joe Pepitone, but he quickly settled down. Now he's behind on Lopez. Three balls, one strike. Caught the inside corner. Lopez thought he had himself a walk on that one, but Mel Steiner said no, and it's a fork out of 3-2. Two. two out, nobody on base. Should Lopez get on, Bobby Richardson will be up next. What a check lines again. The 3-2 pitch, fly ball, center field. Jimmy Wynn barely moves for this one. Couple steps to his right to retire the side. Three up and three down. So what a check now has retired seven batters in a row since he hit Maris in the arm in the 10th inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. 
We go now to the bottom half of inning number 12. The score, New York 1 and Houston 1. Last half of the 12th inning now, we have a new pitcher for the New York Yankees, right-hander Pete Mickelson, has come on to take over for Hal Renniff, who is listed for a pinch batter. Jimmy Wynn will lead off. He'll be followed by Bob Lillis and then Ron Brand. Mickelson spells his name M-I-K-K-E-L-S-E-N, Mickelson. This will be his seventh game this spring. He's put 16 innings, allowed nine hits and has a real good ERA of only 1.13 for nine innings. 13 strikeouts in 16 innings and six walks. He's pitching like he's trying to make the starting staff here for the Yankees this spring. Here's Jim Wynn. He singled his last time. Right-handed batter, first pitch, low ball one. Wynn has had one for four. He's grounded out twice and has struck out once. Nobody out, nobody on base. Bottom half of the 12th inning, and this ball game is tied 1-1. It's been that way since the 6th inning. Wind checks. It was in there for a strike. On the inside corner, the belt 1-1. One one. Nicholson stands 6-2, weighs 215 pounds, and a native New Yorker. Last year with the Yankees, he won seven ball games and lost four. Came up through the Yankee system. Here's the pitch now. High ball. Big cut on that one by Wynn, and he bounces it right at his feet. One ball, two strikes. Bob Lillis has moved to the on-deck circle off the right side. Manager Johnny Keene now has used three pitchers tonight. Mel Stottlemyre won eight. Last half of the 11th inning, and Rusty Staub will lead off, and before he steps in, let's pause here for station identification. This is the Astros Baseball Network. And this is KRLV AM and FM Dallas, where the baseball action is. It's one past ten. We have two pitchers warming up now, as I mentioned, for New York. Right-hander Pete Mickelson down the left field line, and now right-hander Claude Ramon has started to warm up for Houston down in right field. Here is Rusty Staub. Bottom of the 11th, score tied 1-1. Rusty looking for his first hit. is 0 for 4. Rusty slide out twice to Roger Maris in right field. is hit into a double play. And was safe on a fielder's choice. Al Renna for right-hander throws the first pitch to Staub. Strike called on the inside corner of the bell strike one. Mickey Mantle homered in the sixth. And the Astros tied it up in the bottom half. That's where she stands right now. One and one. Rennett's next pitch. Foul ball just underneath us here. In the mezzanine section. And Trout is down on Rennett here. Two strikes. Center fielder Tom Trash is over in right center field for Staub. But Hector Lopez in left. Not going around too much on him. Rennett's next pitch now. There's a high pop foul. This will be out of play also. Back up and over the screen. Up and hits the top of the screen and then bounces into the seat. That was an easy play for that fellow. He took it on the back. Two strikes. Rennett has a new baseball now and uh, roughs it up a little bit. Rennett has a sign again from Bob Smith. Here's the wind-up in the next pitch to Rusty. Swing and a foul ball. Just got a piece of that one, uh, so Rusty's still in there. Smith couldn't hold on to it. Kirk Farrell, of course, threw the first pitch tonight, and uh, time was called after the first pitch to Mickey Mantle, who opened the stadium with the ball, and uh, then was handed over to the president of the National League, Warren Giles. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Right up came with a good fastball up around the letters. One out now, and that'll bring up Walt Bond. That's the second strikeout for Rennett, the third for Yankee pitching. Bond has two for four, a double and a single. Incidentally, that first pitch thrown tonight by Farrell is going to the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown. Here's the pitch into Walter. Ground ball, first base side. Easy play for Joe Pepitone. Unassisted, Bond has found it out. And they're two away. Well, here's Aspromati now. Astro is 0 for 4. Ken Smith, the Hall's, uh, Hall of Fame's creator, uh, will accept that baseball from President Warren Giles. Well, two out, nobody on. 
That throw is flied out, grounded out twice. Uh, once to get into a double play. And is fouled out. Outfield remains deep and around the left side. Here's the pitch on the way by Rennett. The Nastro checked his swing on a curveball that broke down and away in a ball one. One and nothing. That Detroit-Milwaukee game is over, and the Braves won it tonight from the Tigers, 6-3. to three. Staub is struck out. Bond is grounded out. Astro takes a fastball, low and inside. Ball two and no strikes. This is the third inning for Rennett. Woodishick now has pitched four innings in relief of Turk Farrell, and Mel Saddlemeyer was the starter for New York. Here's the pitch to Astro. High top foul out of play, headed for the seat off the right side. The highest that any of the foul balls have reached tonight has been the second seating level here, and as I mentioned earlier, there are six seating levels. It take a pretty good poke to get up too much higher than that. Runner set again now. Two ball, one strike count on Astro. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the shortstop. Way back in the hole. Kubek throws to first. Lots of time. Astro is out to retire the side. So three up and three down. And that ends 11 innings. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Still all tied up here at the Astrodome. The Yankees won. And the Astros won. Well, we're on to the 12th inning here now in a 1-1 game. And catcher Bob Schmidt will be the leadoff batter. came in the sixth inning tonight. Schmidt actually is not on the uh, Yankee roster. And of course it's not necessary for the ball clubs to pair down to the season's opening 28 until Monday. Here's the pitch. Schmidt, a right-handed batter, takes a strike. Strike one. This is only the third game in which Schmidt has appeared. He's been at bat only three times. Has no hits and has struck out uh, two of the three times at the plate. Strike on the inside corner above the knees. One ball, one strike. On the lead batter for New York. Top half of the 12th inning. Here's Woodishick's next pitch now. Low and outside. Ball two, strike one. Both bullpens are still occupied with right-hander Claude Raymond loosening up for Houston. And right-hander Pete Mickelson for New York. Woodishick throws again now. There's a curveball. <laughs> he got him on that one. And he struck him out. That was a very bad pitch as far as uh, Schmidt was concerned. A good one for Woody. He was very low and inside. Breaking ball that uh, Schmidt struck out on. So there's one down now. That's the fifth strikeout for Woodyshick. This by far is the best that Woody has looked this spring. And I might mention again the best that Farrell has looked in the seven innings that he worked tonight. Ross Machito is coming on to pinch hit now for the pitcher Hal Rennett. Machito is a first-year player. He spells his name M-O-S-C-H-I-T-T-O. M-O-S-C-H-I-T-T-O, Machito. He's an outfielder and uh, played quite a bit of center field this spring for the Yankees. Machito now batting for Rennett. One out, nobody on base. So we'll have a look at Pete Mickelson in the bottom half of the 12th inning. Pitches outside of ball, ball on. One and nothing. Hector Lopez, the top of the batting order for the Yankees, will be up next. Here's the next pitch by Woodishick. Ground ball to the shortstop, Bob Billis. Big hop for the flea, and the throw to first in lots of time. Machito has found shot two away. Billis to Bond. Here's Hector Lopez to replace Mickey Mantle in left field. Mantle, uh, bothered by a hamstring muscle injury to his right leg, did play through seven innings tonight. Lopez has done up only once. In the tenth inning, he struck out. And it was Woodishick who struck him out. Woody's been pitching since the eighth. So he is in his fifth inning. This may be his last. Here's the pitch now. Ball outside, ball one. Hector Lopez, right-handed batter. Hector is not in the plans, of course, as a starter for New York, but a good man to have around, as is John Blanchard, both uh, good utility men. There's a foul ball that's fielded by Vern Benson, the Yankee coach at first, and he shoots it back out to Woodishick. And it's one ball and one strike. Well, as we watch the amazing things that have happened here tonight in this amazing palace, you sort of look on to when the thing could suddenly be transformed. Oh, Woody, watch that one. He really threw that one away. 
that pitch slips completely out of his hands. And it hit about 30 feet back over Ron Brand's head up against the screen. Ball two and strike one. All the field seats here, 10,000 of them, can be moved around to position in for football. Here's the pitch on the way to Hector Lopez. Very low and in the dirt. And it's ball three and strike one. Woody has given up two bases on balls and really has had only one wild string. That was in the 10th inning when he hit Roger Maris and then got behind on Joe Pepitone, but he quickly settled down. Now he's behind on Lopez. Three balls, one strike. Caught the inside corner. Lopez thought he had himself a walk on that one, but Mel Steiner said no, and it's a full count of 3-2. Two out, nobody on base. Should Lopez get on, Bobby Richardson will be up next. Wittishek winds again. The 3-2 pitch. Fly ball, center field. Jimmy Wynn barely moves for this one. Couple steps to his right to retire the side. Three up and three down. So Wittishek now has retired seven batters in a row since he hit Paris in the arm in the 10th inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We go now to the bottom half of inning number 12. The score, New York 1 and Houston 1. Last half of the 12th inning now, we have a new pitcher for the New York Yankees. Right-hander Pete Mickelson has come on to take over for Hal Renup, who was lifted for a pinch batter. Jimmy Wynn will lead off. He'll be followed by Bob Lillis and then Ron Brand. Mickelson spells his name M-I-double-K. E-L-S-E-N, Mickelson. This will be his seventh game this spring. He's pitched 16 innings, allowed nine hits, and has a real good ERA of only 1.13 for nine innings. 13 strikeouts in 16 innings and six walks. He's pitching like he's trying to make the starting staff here for the Yankees this spring. Here's Jim Wynn. He singled his last time. Right-handed batter, first pitch, low ball one. Wynn has had one for four. He's grounded out twice and has struck out once. Nobody out, nobody on base. Bottom half of the 12th inning in this ball game is tied 1-1. It's been that way since the sixth inning. Wynn checks. It was in there for a strike on the inside corner of the belt, 1-1. One one. Nicholson stands 6'2", weighs 215 pounds, and a native New Yorker. Last year with the Yankees, he won seven ball games and lost four. Came up through the Yankee system. Here's the pitch now. Foul ball. Big cut on that one by Wynn, and he bounces it right at his feet. One ball, two strikes. Bob Lillis has moved to the on-deck circle off the right side. Manager Johnny Keene now has used three pitchers tonight. Mel Stottlemyre won eight. Hal Renneth pitched three. Here's the one and two pitch to win. Very low outside. And uh, Schmidt had to move fast to stop that one down and off the right side. And it's ball two strike two. Claude Raymond still uh, warming up for Houston down the right side. If we get a man on, we'll probably have a pinch hitter for Woodishick. I think Woody's pitched as much as he's going to tonight anyway. Here's the pitch to win. Now ground ball back in the hole. Beautiful stop by Kubek. Throw well, not in time. I'll say one thing for the left side of that Yankee infield tonight. They have been magicians. That ball actually bounced off Boyer's glove and then uh, Kubek backhanded it. Still made the play to first base, but no way to get win. He packs good speed. And Wynn now has his second hit tonight. That gives him two for five. That, of course, is the first hit off Mickelson. The hits are all even now. Runs even 1-1. One, one. Hits are tied up 8-8. Eight, eight. Now they're watching for the punt off the bat of Bob Lillis. Nobody out. Went on first base. Fleet Boyer moves in from third. Here's the stretch by Nicholson. First pitch to Lillis. Pitch out. Uh, nobody goes anywhere, though. Win was not going. Schmidt called for a pitch out on the first pitch to Lillis. As both Pepitone and Boyer broke in. Flea is 0 for 4 tonight. Rounded out twice. Lined out and was safe on the fielder's choice. Nicholson checks the sign again with Schmidt. Lillis trying to bunt Wynn down to scoring position. Here comes Boyer in from third. High inside pitch. Lillis was squared around to drop one down. But Nicholson's pitch was up around the head. And it's ball two, no strike. This is the bottom of the 12th. Score tied 1-1. 47,876 watching this one tonight. That's about 3,000 over capacity. Boyer in close to third again now. Wynn takes his lead off first base. Here comes Boyer. Here comes Pepitone. Lillis takes a strike on the inside corner of the knees. Possibly the take was on there. Uh, 
pitch was in around the knees. Willis was down to bunt it, but he didn't offer at it. There's nobody out, and Ron Brand, the catcher, will be up next. Ball two, strike one. Boyer about 25 feet in front of third. Here comes Pepitone pulling away from first base, and uh, <laughs> Pepitone quickly ran back as uh, Mickelson shot the ball over to first, but no chance to get a win there. Boyer still in close at third. Ball two, strike one on Lillis. Wynn takes the big lead. He goes off just about as far as... There goes Wynn down, swinging a ground ball foul. Oh, almost got it by Boyer. But it was fouled by quite a margin. In between Jim Busby and third base. So Wynn was breaking on a hit and run there. And it's ball two and strike two. Wynn with good speed on first base and nobody out. This will take off the bunt situation now pretty much with a two-ball, two-strike count on Lillis. So Boyer is backed up now, and he's just about even with third. They are not expecting the bunt here with two strikes on Lillis. Went away from Pepitone on first. Pepitone sneaks over in the grass now. Here's the pitch, and Lillis did bunt, and he strikes out. Fouled it off back into the screen. Well, he took the gamble there. Very rarely do you see a normal batter in the order uh, bunt on the third strike. But they thought the percentages were good there with Lillis a pretty fair punter, but he just couldn't come up with it, and he punted foul and struck out. Nicholson's first strikeout, that's the fourth strikeout by Yankee pitching. One away now with Wynn on first, and here's Ron Brand. Brand has one for four, he tripled in the third. Fly to center, the last two times up, he's bounced to Boyer and to Kubek. And Wynn takes the big lead away from Pepitone on first. Stretch by Mickelson. He draws the throw. He'll get a few throws over there with that lead. But Wynn has no trouble getting back in. Ron Brand, right-handed batter. Score tied 1-1, bottom half of the 12. Another throw to first. And Wynn again back in. Jim Beecham has moved to the on-deck circle. He'll pinch back for Hal Wittesick. So we'll have Claude Raymond on on the 13th of so this ball game is continuing. One out. Wind breaks and then stops. Brand fouls it off. A hopper into the Yankee dugout. Back a third. And it's one strike on the Houston catchers. Mickelson got a new ball from uh, Mel Steiner. Doesn't like it and asked for a new one. Stottlemyre in the eight innings that he worked for New York tonight allowed the one run. Gave up four hits. And Rennes did not allow a run. Pitched three innings and allowed three hits. And Mickelson has given the one hit in this inning. His first on the mound for New York. Win again. Takes the big lead away from Pepitone. There he goes. There's a swing and a miss, and Smith doesn't get the throw away. Still in base. Smith uh, juggled that ball. He didn't have a good grip on it. Just as he cocked his arm, it slipped out of his fingers. Uh, although he held it, he did not get the throw away. So Win gets the stolen base. That's the second Houston stolen base tonight. Morgan stole in the 10th inning. So for the uh, second time in extra innings now, Houston has the winning run on second base. One out. And a two-strike out on Ron Brand. Here's Mickelson's pitch. Brand swings and he misses. Lost the bat and struck him out. The pitch that uh, Wynn stole on was a beauty of a changeup that really fooled Brand. Nelly Fox is going to bat. They had Beecham in there, but now they called on Nelly Fox. Two strikeouts in a row here for Mickelson. Tom Harris had Jim Beecham in the on-deck circle, and I assume the move here is that he was hoping for an extra base hit off the bat of Beecham, who went with power, and now with a winning run on second, he's put in Nelly Fox. Here's the pitch by Mickelson. Swing and a miss. That's ball. And it's one strike on Nelly. Nelly has seen very little spring action. This is only his fifth game. He has three for 12. The batting average is 250. He has one run batted in, and Nelly has one triple. Little left-handed batter. Mickelson throws. Fouled off the left side. So Mickelson quickly gets out in front of Fox. Two strikes. Win on second base. He represents the winning run. Last of the 12. Score tied 1 1. Outfield, of course, is shallowed up, and they have that very familiar box shift on. Fresh in left center field. 
Lopez shaded toward the left field foul line. And Maris shaded over into right center field. Nelly back in again now. 0-2 count. Two out. And Mickelson takes a quick check on win at second base. Here's the pitch. And Fox lost one to center field. And the ball game is over. Here's the throw. And you can win. Houston, two runs on nine hits, no errors, and uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight men were left on base. For New York, one run on eight hits. The Yankees committed three errors tonight, and the Bombers stranded five, six, seven, eight, nine in this 12 inning ball game. The winning pitcher is Hal Wittichick, and the losing pitcher is Pete Mickelson. The Official paid attendance here tonight, 47,876. And the time of the ball game was two hours and 35 minutes. Well, fans, that wraps up our play-by-play -play story here tonight with the Astros winning over New York by the score of 2-1. to one. This evening's game has been brought to you by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Longview, Texas, and other cities. Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous simply because it tastes so good. By Maryland Club Coffee. The coffee you'd drink if you owned all the coffee in the world. Maryland Club, served everywhere in the Astrodome. And by Silky Smooth Lovera, the great state's great cigar. You can't get them hardly anywhere but Texas. Now this is Gene Nelson with a reminder to stay tuned for a recap of the game. We'll have an interview for you and a roundup of all the other activities in baseball. All on the Astros Wrap-Up Show.